Yo guys, it's me Matrix, coach of the Welsh Waylords, and this week I'm bringing you the part, the weekly recap of week two of the UGA season two, Johto division. And with me this week, I've got Brian. What's up guys? I got Oddball. Hello. And we have a special guest, the winner of last season's Johto division, Carmine. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, this week was an interesting week. We've got a few more two and one matches uh, played this week. Um, what are your initial thoughts of the matchups this week, guys? So, uh, I, I, guess, guess, I guess a lot of what we expected. Uh, we pretty much were all in the Dark Lord Greninja's favor. And then mm -hmm. even some of those that uh, weren't as expected, they were just really one-sided matches, too. We had another week of some one-sided matches lately as well. Hmm. A little bit of what we expected and then a little bit of one-sidedness. A lot of those 2 O's were very one-sided. Yeah. I don't remember what we predicted the results to be. Um, so we'll just try and run it through memory. But uh, so the first match that we got here was the London Lucarios versus the Dark Lords Greninjas. And the Dark Lords Greninjas managed to take that game 2 0. Did anyone manage to catch that match? Uh, oh, yeah. That, was that recorded? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it was. was. It was. Yeah, um, I, saw the first, I saw the first game, and it was uh, similar to how I beat them. How I beat the London Lucarios last week with the Roar Strats because mm -hmm. he had Suicune. Yep, they they implemented it really well. They had Roar Taunt on uh, Grimmsnarl and like Prankster uh, Persian that they brought didn't really do much uh, on uh, the Perlon, London Lucario uh, side. Was Perlon, yeah. Uh, Perlon, yeah. Perlon, 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 yeah. Perlon, yeah. Perlon. Not Persian. Yeah. Yeah. That makes Perlon. more sense. That makes more sense. Yeah, the. Yeah, um, yeah. Lucario, so yeah, they had the Perloin this week, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Um, I haven't actually got around to watching it myself yet, but I remember you guys saying that it was quite a dominant victory for the Dark Lords. Mm -hmm. And then uh, London Lucario's ran Memento on the Dust Glops. That's an so, interesting pick. It's not something you see every day, so I think he was trying to think a little bit outside the box a little more. Mm -hmm. that he... Part. I remember this week though the Lucarios actually picked up some KOs though, didn't they? So it wasn't yeah. as it wasn't as much of an eight oh sweep as it was for them last week. Um yeah. so at least it there was a bit, I'm glad to see. I think Scrafty managed to pick up two KOs mm -hmm. out of the two games. So at least uh he was getting a, rolling a little bit and wasn't just getting completely walled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, Scraf Scrafty got two, Sendaconda got one. Mm. Mm. Uh, they brought Sandicom to GMAX this week. Yeah, they did. Interesting. So, then the, there was the South Croydon Saws versus the Drowsy Dracozolts. And that was another game that was 2-0. and And I remember last week being really torn about whether which team would win. Going into this match, we all knew it was going to be who could have the faster mode. It was always mm -hmm. going to be uh, this contest for speed. And mainly containing the speed control through the game. And the Dracozolts were a little bit of a disadvantage going in, as although they are both fast teams, the South Croydon Saws have just got that better speed control. They've got that more naturally speedier team. So the Dracozolts had to try that hard, bit harder to match that type of air speed pressure. And I think yeah. the result kind of shows that the South Croydon Saws still managed to outplay them on the speed control. Mm -hmm. And it's another thing to note that they just had way more reliable tailwind in my opinion uh and they didn't really need sun up for something like venusaur but they they were able to enable um like a majority of their team to be faster mm -hmm. uh beyond something like subtile and burden that they did use uh just simply by having tailwind up yeah um, yeah, I mean, looking at this match, I, something that I was a bit upset not seeing was that the uh, Klefki didn't make an appearance during this uh, this match. Oh, uh, I think the Klefki was picked up for week three. Oh, it's a, tra it's a okay. trade that's been happening mm -hmm. for week three. 
Okay. Okay. So he really, I, he, I still had Staka Taka, right? Or he still had, yeah, he had Staka Taka for this match still. Exactly. So, I mean, I was hoping to see maybe some Kangaskhan action or did, was Kangaskhan still there? Did you bring Kangaskhan? Yeah, Kangaskhan. Uh, Kangaskhan. Uh, yeah, Kangaskhan and Stakataka could have been actually good or also Rapidash itself to set up Trick Room. So, I mean, something that I've been, I've been noticing and we, we saw all this together is that, I mean, speed control is so important. And if you're not, if you cannot go as fast as your opponent, then you probably want to shoot a curveball and try to go for a trick room strategy, even if you don't have the fastest mon on the field, yeah. right? So even with the Zapdos, Zapdos is, uh, is not, I mean, it's really fast, but uh, if you just uh, train it in the way that uh, it can perform most well in trick room, and I don't know, maybe probably this wasn't uh, the week, but in general, I think he had in his... Uh, uh, in his arsenal, the, the right tools to to play it, and I think that you know we we showed that he could have gone so fast, but maybe for next week, may think about the the tools he has and a bit more. So yeah, yeah. That, that's the only thing. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, just because if he's got these both of these teams have got these fast modes. It yep, was yep. clear going in that uh, the Dracosaurs were always going to be that little bit disadvantaged. And even though he's got fast mons, he can allow the South Korean stores to boost their speed through Tailwind, through Unburden, and just trick room in his face. And these naturally fast mons are actually slower and are moving yep, for mm -hmm. them inside the trick room. So I get, I see what you're saying with that. Yep. And that's a that's another thing too, because if you know that you're going to be outsped, there's no point in investing more than you have to in speed. Exactly. Exactly. The actual match itself, some of the key highlights I found was, or the most notable uh, points of the game, was the opening turn was a, I believe, Septile Indeedy for the South Croydon Saws of game one. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. Septile running the uh, Psychic Seed. Uh, Indeedy was Choice Scarf. So, as, as you say, it's, it's just about that speed. Um, what was impressive in a, in a way is that the Dracozolts led Venusaur and Inteleon. I think they wanted to set up this uh, swamp, uh, the, the swamp with the grassy pledge and the water pledge moves. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. immediately he saw he was going to be at a disadvantage to do that. So he went to switch out to get the speed boost from uh, Venusaur Chlorophyll with a, a, what's it called? Drought Ninetales. So yeah. the South Coronasaurs had kind of prepped for this in a way. And he predicted he was going to switch there, went for a faster worry seed into the Venusaur, changed its abilities to chlorophyll, and indeed he's then a faster than the Venusaur and just expanding forces in its face. Yeah. If not for the focus sash on the Venusaur, that was a dead Venusaur. Yeah. yeah. So the South Corona Saws seemed to be really prepped for every type of speed speed control that the Dracozolts could have. Um the Dracozolts were unlucky though in that game two, I believe, yeah. when it was they got they got frozen, didn't they? The Venusaur. Yeah. And if not for that freeze, I'm pretty sure he could have taken that second game at least, because the Venusaur would have hit the I think it was Latios, and then the insurance by the Kangaskhan would have doubled in power, especially with the black glasses as well, boosting it, would have killed the Kang the Latios, and then it was just one versus two or three. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a game-changing freeze hacks for that. Which is unfortunate, so. especially off a 10% ice beam. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was unlucky, but whether they won the third match or not, who knows, but it's always... That's, that, that third match could have meant a lot in terms of the Dracula results uh, final mm -hmm. outcome. Definitely. So. Moving from that, we go to the Chroma Colossals versus the Lily Cove Lycan Rocks, which was a 2 1 win. And I don't, this what this match wasn't recorded. And I'm not yeah, so certain. I don't as, have any contact. Yeah, I'm not certain as to what happened. I'm kind of surprised that the Lycan Rocks managed to take a game. Not to mm -hmm. say that, like, um, the, like, to this, to, put a bad light on their team or anything but because of we've 
the whole server has ranked the Chroma Colossals team as being this top heavy strong mode team and the Lycan Rocks being this mix of weird and wonderful mons that uh, I'm just I'm just surprised that they managed to uh, take a set I'm trying to think back as to what happened has anyone got the match stats I've got the battle report up here um, it seems like a lot of in game one Colossal and Mudsdale yeah maybe uh, they seemed pretty dominant and they got Colossal got a kill on Landorus with something. Espeon died with rocks. Mudsdale KO'd Corviknight. It was a 3-0 victory for the Grimmit Colossals. Quite a dominant um, really. Yeah, it it seems like that one wasn't close. But game two, uh, the Lilico of Lycanrocks brought, I think, Landorus Espeon. And Colossal KO'd Landorus first. But That's Espeon a... managed to KO both Colossal and Mudsdale. So I remember talking to Dave about this match. And if I'm not mistaken, what happened in that game too is that the Espeon Max mm -hmm. and in Psychic Terrain mm -hmm. that the Espeon had uh, set with a previous Max Mindstorm, it got a terrain boosted, boosted by Help and Hand and crit the um, Colossal in game two. Uh, so, I mean, a crit, help in hand, terrain boosted, max mind storm. It managed to just one shot the colossal. Yeah, because yeah, at the end, colossal yeah. is not that super strong mon. I mean, it's it's uh it's one of those mon that you, when you get them going, you need to stop, and it's a real threat. However, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to taking it, colossal needs to, to boost to actually or like live screen support to actually take it because we, we know how frail it is and how many weaknesses it has. And of course, Psychic is not one of them, but yeah, I mean, Espion, it's really hard. Let's not forget he has a 130 special attack, uh, base special attack. So yeah. exactly. I it's think it's strong. Also interesting to note, I don't think in either game he enabled that Colossal in the way that you would initially think of. Because <laughs> in both games, it seems like he had Colossal Mudsdale lead. Uh, uh, but uh, Colossal KOs Landorus, right? So, I mean, to yeah, KO Landorus... In, in both so... games, in both games. But I'm not sure how. It I might don't... just be the way it's been reported from his memory that he might not be in a specific order. But what was interesting yeah. about that game too is that he nearly brought it back with Shellos. And it yeah. didn't show the kills, yeah. but there was 10 HP in the game left when the game finished. Like wow. there was like 10 HP difference between the two moms. Wow. And mm -hmm. the Shellos nearly brought the game back. Which is quite yeah, impressive Shellos. to be honest. Yeah, Shellos is one of those months that you always underestimate and uh, you know with every light a, a couple of stockpiles and uh, yeah it gets really annoying and uh, really hard to remove from the field. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the as, as I say the the, the, the um the Colossal was picking up the KOs when it actually got to a max and didn't get crit by the uh, yeah. Max Mind Storm. I mean, and I think it got seven KOs in the end. And although it wasn't the actual Colossal doing the damage that got the KOs, it was its uh, G-Max move that rock. was picking, yeah, yeah. the Volcalith yeah. doing the residual, residual damage to get all them KOs. But <sighs> it's, and it's That's still something that you have to, to note, because even if you stop it from getting set up, if it gets a max... Uh, Vocalith off. It's going to chip away at your team slowly if you choose to or not, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. uh, I think uh, that was a, that's, that, that explains what the results I mean is in. And mm -hmm. it's the game we play, like it's these weird and wonderful crits, these RNG um, dependent turns, they happen all the time and uh, the Colossals didn't let that uh, stop them for the third game and they managed to just take the win home then yeah so yeah. moving on we've got the match between both of uh both of you the orlando yeah. osher watts and you oddball versus the charlotte b drills and brian so do who wants to start off i'll concede uh, to the winner of this match to um start it off yeah um really it's a 
I don't want to be rude here, but I think it was a difficult matchup for you. Um, because as soon as I got my tailwind going, uh, it, like if I had that option to get that tailwind going, it would outspeed something like your Excadrill or Sand Team. So I put you in a position really this week where you had to get up Trick Room. Um, and I think that that's more difficult to do than just getting Sand up and Excadrill going and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and even though it was one-sided, the results don't really show too much because I think as soon as I think if you played a little bit um a little bit closer to that trick room idea and less so with the honestly I don't know really what you tried to do game one, but in both in both uh games you, you dynamaxed your weakness policy gigalith. And I think that just by virtue of me being able to ignore that and it not doing enough damage to do uh, to really hurt anything other than something like Whimsicott or Arcanine, uh, it really put you at a disadvantage. Whereas if you, you max something like Cradilly under Trick Room and you made sure that all of that could get going, I think that uh, you, you really could have started sweeping yeah, there. Yeah, it's a little too late for me. Yeah, and, and that's okay, though. Because like, you're going to come up with, against more teams like mine. Like Even the South Corridor and Swords, I don't know if you play them or not, but they're their team and their idea of beating up uh, like a really powerful Mon and just kind of sweeping through teams is uh, pretty similar. And being able to take this loss and sort of adapt it into maybe kind of focus on your win conditions more yeah, uh, can can definitely help. And really don't take it too harshly. It's week two. Yeah. I'm sure you'll bounce back and oh, yeah, get a absolutely. bunch of wins by the end of the season. Yeah, I, I mean, was just I convinced that Hitmonchan was coming. I was convinced, like mm -hmm. I saw what it was doing, and it was that kind of had more to do with Hitmonchan. And I had this problem last year when I planned for something and they didn't bring it, and I still brought my plan for yeah, yeah, one that didn't come. That was, yeah, I mean, was I mean, issues of last year, and I'm still working on that as a player. Yeah, I mean, I think we we talked about it also in. Uh, I mean, I also watched the match and. Yes, congrats, Oddball, for, for the win. I think it was a really well-played set from your side. But, I mean, Brian, as I, as I told you, like, I think it's important to also uh, go into the plan. It's like, okay, my opponent dropped what I wasn't expecting. Let's try to find out a, a, a plan that actually works. And mm -hmm. I feel like if at that point you were able to set up Trick Room and then enable uh, your Giga, it could have been another game. But, I, yeah. I also... I know you talked about, like, I don't want to go yeah. into too much out of no, it's fine. game stuff, but I know you talked about not bringing Fake Out on War Turtle simply because Hitmonchan could have come. Yeah. And I I think that even if you didn't have, uh, like, even if I brought Hitmonchan, having Fake Out on a bulky Mon that can switch out and also support your other Mons with activating Weakness Policy or activating Storm Drain, I think being able to really take control of that, even if something like Hitmonchan had come, um, being able to stop a Pokemon for a turn is very valuable. And it w also would have helped you get Trick Room up in the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have any thoughts on it? Um, I'm just, I'm myself still trying to, um, I know the match is already over, I shouldn't even be thinking about it, but it's just like, I don't know, it's just, talking about the fake out on the um or turtle and i just don't i guess in the in the way i could see it like i could have faked out even going for the double protect and then went for the trick room automatic trick room mm -hmm. there but i yeah. don't know that was um uh, matrix knows i just have i just had like zero confidence that entire week <laughs> is the way i was I don't know. That was just a rough week for me. I think um, moving forwards, like you, you, last week you had a very dominant win. And then you come into this week and you've had a bit of a setback. Um, I think just moving on from this week's match, you just got to put it behind you, learn from it, and just be like, I yeah. need, you need to identify how you're going to end your match, how you're going to yeah. mm -hmm. play to a point where you can see what you need to do to win. And just basically... Get your game plan and 
not so much stick to it to the letter, but be adaptable to the situations that uh, your opponent mm -hmm. puts you in. Yeah, and that's one of my issues. I don't have a lot of adaptability I, I going think into the match. I think that's something that with even just one move change, though, you, you really could have been pushing that idea of even though I brought something that you didn't expect, like I brought beat up Arcanine into a sand team full of rock and ground types. But just because I brought that doesn't mean that you should, and like over something like Hitmonchan, doesn't really mean you can't try to set up Trick Room. For example, if you had brought uh, like both of your Trick Room setters that week, I know you don't have one anymore, uh, like one of the two, but if mm -hmm. you had brought both of them and just led them, even though you don't have Fake Out, like I can't stop that, you know? There's nothing on my team that can prevent it from going up. And you did but, bring both Trick Room setters. You brought Slowbro yeah, and yeah. uh, Bronzong. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I think that even if you clicked Trick Room twice on two mons, it was still safer than going on it with like one mod at a time and then maxing your Gigalith next to it. Because mm. um, yeah. that's, that's going to surprise someone game one for sure. Game two, maybe they predict that you trick room with both and they let you be for one turn and you only trick room with one. Like things like that. You can just uh, like really kind of identify what needs to happen for you to win. How can you get it to happen in a somewhat surprising way, game one? And then how can mm -hmm. you build off of that and really like improve that game and do something even more unexpected game two? You know? And that is something yeah. that's kind of difficult to do, but I, I, I know that you're a good enough player to really take this and try to learn to do that, you know? Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. it's, uh, it's only the start of the season as well, so there's plenty of time uh, to improve even more. So yeah, mm -hmm. we move off from your two's matchup to the Bavarian Landorus versus the Southeast Luxrays. Now, this was a match that went two and one in the Landorus's favor, which was the matchup between G Max Charizard and was it was it Weakness Policy Latias? Uh, I don't believe I don't I don't actually remember. I don't uh, think it got activated that turn one. Yeah, I don't one. remember, but it had G Max Charizard, obviously, because it's the lovely sun team of Charizard and Sableye, uh, versus Bioptics uh Tapu Fini, didn't it? So yep. the most notable thing about this match for me was, I think it was, was it game two where Tapu Fini and Charizard maxed together, but both at the same time. And that was it. Tapu Fini was led with a uh, drift blim with Misty Seed, uh, obviously breaking the uh, unburdened ability on drift blim. Sableye used sunny day with prankster set up the sun. Drift blim then counters with rain dance because obviously it moves Every, faster than everyone. Charizard hits the type of Finny with a max overgrowth, I believe, not doing overly much without the solar power boost. Mm -hmm. And Tapu Finny is quite specially bulky as well. And then Tapu Finny just completely shuts down that Charizard in that turn and just one shots mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that to me was probably the most impressive turn of events of that game. The one that, it, that sticks in my mind the most. And I think it's because of the Lux Rays knew what they were doing when they were setting up their team to counter it. So they'd created a plan and they executed it perfectly in that turn. Mm -hmm. And uh, sorry. even in game one, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, like even in game one, they had an idea of how to beat that Charizard lead anyways. Like they brought Lycan uh, Rock. Rock Midnight, yeah, yes. which is not something you would normally bring uh, just by a like rating standard or how good people generally think the Pokemon is. But in this matchup, I mean, it hits the Sableye for neutral. It hits the Latias for, uh, for super effective if you have a dark move on it. You have really massive damage against that. I think it had Playbrush, yeah. Had play rush, yeah. Super effective. Ah, yeah. So it even hits Sableye for super oh, effective. Wow. It has it has quite the coverage, uh, like a rock. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's and that's something that's interesting, too. But, like, he, he was able to take advantage of that. And even though he lost, I think that being able to kind of have that game plan, like knowing that you're going to set up rain before everyone else, but after Sableye sets sun, 
Like that's really smart. I think that having a game plan against the threat that is GMAX, Charizard, and Sableye, um, like all sorts of things like that. And even though he lost, I feel like his kind of prep was there. And I think that's really good to see. Uh, definitely. Yeah, I was going to ask you, Carmen, what your thoughts were if you watched any of it. Uh, no, I mean, I, I mainly agree with what uh, Otto said. So, I mean, get it, seeing the prep there, it's always uh, something that you, you aim to see, right? So not, not always when the game goes in your favor also, but it's important to also see that you prepped and uh, you, you show that you knew what you were doing and then you can budge mm-hmm. back in case the week afterwards. So, yeah. yeah. No, I agree. The, um, if the, the bio, Bioptics uh, prep has been pretty good um, past few weeks. I think he's prepped for his opponents well. Uh, it's just been, either he's been unlucky in the first week or this week he prepped well for the main modes and then was caught off guard a little bit by what the Latios was doing. La- the Latios was doing. And yeah. I think he just needed to be a bit more, again, similar to like how Brian needs, uh, needs to just be a bit more uh, reactive to the game that's developing in front of him. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like the uh, that's something Bioptic can, uh, is going to start to improve upon as well. When the game takes an unexpected shift and something that he didn't uh, expect to happen or he didn't prep for, like the Max Latios, he, he, like I think he even said in this video that like he didn't expect Latios to be a Max threat. And I think it just caught him off guard and it just kind of not derailed him, but just almost like, you know, what I'm trying to say is in there, uh, just made himself right. unsure of what he was to do next. So I, I will say the first turn of the first game, even though he did get surprised, he was able to set up light screen identify that he needed to you know like mitigate the damage from Latias, even if it isn't a common uh, like offensive choice for dynamax but he was able to get the light screen off and i don't quite remember if uh is it meowstic yeah meowstic was able to to fully live after both attacks but it was able to really eat up a max phantasm from Latias, and i think that had he built upon that sort of i have an extra turn of dynamax now and I have even more if I choose to kind of tank it a little bit and mm-hmm. sort of max after your max. Um, I think that if he had played to that idea that he can stall out this Pokemon that isn't really as offensive as something like a Charizard and Sun, mm. um, something like that, and he could really take advantage of his opponent maxing turn one, maxing early with a Pokemon that really can't do much damage without setup, you know? Definitely. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he do a few switches in his matches? He did a few hard switches. Check. I believe he did a few hard switches, and I think I was a little bit, I found them a little bit, not questionable, but a bit like, ooh, I'm not sure if that was the best play to have made there. Like you were saying, like, stalling out would have been a better idea than switching mm-hmm. to try and get his uh, offensive mods in, if you if you wish. But could be wrong yeah but that's the thing i mean sometimes you also need to understand when it's the moment to suck a pokemon so you know i mean sometimes it's not as bad to go like uh, to let one pokemon go and like say okay it's fine this pokemon is gone and then maybe with the ones that you have in the back freshly full since we have this dynamax uh, dynamic that you can dynamax and double the hp uh, you can just uh, get the momentum back. But I think it's important that as a player to identify how you can stop the momentum from the other person's side right. and uh, slow it down. I mean, even though if it's sometimes uh, you have to do something as crazy as a max card, right? So it's uh, it's important to, to see the, say, okay, this guy that max turn one, he went for uh, max phantasm on my Let's mm-hmm. go, okay. I have a defense drop. Of course, then with the time also it's going to come the, the the damage calculation a bit, say, okay, am I resisting or not? Uh, but say, okay, for me, the priority is putting, setting up screens. You set up the two screens. If my stick dies, it dies. And then you get you get with the new fresh mod. And yeah, from the other side, they have to be smart also in taking chaos when they damage. So it's, um, it's always interesting, this dynamic on 
to Sakmon to actually gain momentum later with a later Dynamax or right uh, from the get go uh, get and hit really hard. So yeah, it was interesting think- to see those two these two players uh, face each other. Yeah, please. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, game one. Looking back on it now, he actually turn two switched an almost full HP Lycanroc into his Nido Queen, and you guys said that he had play rough on his Lycanroc, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think he could have done, it, but he can't. It can run it. Oh. Well, I think that regardless, he could have dealt either a lot a lot of damage to either Latias or Wigglytuff, even just turn two rather than wasting that turn into a switch and yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure what he did with Meowstic. I think that that's that's, that's why I was remember, remembering. I couldn't remember the months, but I remember he'd done a switch. I was like, it would have been better mm-hmm. to have got some damage off there. The Lycan Rock Sash had already been broken from the Icy Wind. Exactly. Um, and so it was, he was left in a position where, like, if you did switch Lycan Rock back out, then you're switching it in later on, it's going to take some damage to something else that's probably going to get one shot after the... Um, Sash had been broken, and you're switching in a Mon that was at full health to take damage where it didn't need to. And yeah, I think the the Lycan Rock would have been better off in that situation, just doing damage. And in turn one, even um, I think it did over a third health against a Dynamax Latia. So even if you're going minus one, you're going to get it below half. Mm. Yeah. So um, and and even if you're worried about the Charizard in the back and you want to preserve your Lycan Rock, you have Feeny, and it's there for a reason, you know. Mm-hmm. And Charizard can't max anymore. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah. And the Charizard naturally outspeeds uh, Lycan Rock, so it lose once the sash mm-hmm. is broken, it, the Lycan Rock isn't able to do what it needs to do. So, right. Um. So yeah, that was the Bavarian Landorus versus Luxurious, and I, honestly, it was a good match to watch. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of good plays um, from both sides. And I think the Landorus finally showed a little bit more what they can do, but I'm still looking for a bit more from their team. Like they've got a strong yeah. team. I, I feel like they're, they are a strong player. I just feel like they could be showing a little bit more if you understand. I think they're good with the surprise factor. So. Um, I've, I mean, uh, I've been also a bit in the, I think he's German, right? I believe or, so. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've been a bit more familiar with the German community. I know that, uh, they like, like going with a surprise factor, especially in, uh, in draft leagues. And yeah, so I know that the, like surprise factor can actually steal you a game, which is fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, you, I sometimes feel like that's more consistent stuff. And I think he has the tools to to go really with some consistent game plans. And so my suggestion would be to actually focus on some more consistent because, and also to think about the Dynamax as something really important uh, because as of now, it's not a rule that you have to Dynamax turn one, right? So exactly. that was just the only thing that I mean, it's like, okay, we, we can improve in this aspect and yeah. Also well, knowing I, your I cards also... is, is crucial. Yeah. Right. I also think that um, I I don't see the point in sending Wigglytuff in with if you're only going to use it to Helping Hand and Icy Wind uh, yeah. alongside Latias that is because even yeah. if you like even if you have uh, that Helping Hand option you're Icy Winding into two things that are already slower than you mm. and your ally switching sure you avoided a paralysis I think turn two but yeah there was some there was something yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, like you, you've also just revealed you have ally switch for the rest of the thing, and like, yeah, that's somewhat intimidating, but it's really kind of pointless when you think about yeah. I could have taken a kill or two, you know. Yeah, that's also my opinion on on this move. So, um, my opinion on on ally switch is that something that it's it's one of the strongest moves in the game, in my opinion. Uh, the only thing is that you need to be really careful on how you use it because. Once it's revealed, it's revealed. And if the opponent is an experienced opponent, can actually predict it, uh, and you, then you don't do anything that turn. So, I mean, personally, I don't and like that's actually, uh, Yeah, That's actually that's something why. that comes up in Matrix's match. Yeah, exactly. yeah we'll, get to, we'll get to this in a minute. But what I will say is that I was quite impressed with. Bioptic is one of these players who despises Ally Switch. 
And mm -hmm. he usually will falter when Ali Switch is revealed. And I don't think he really faltered once it was revealed this time. He kind of just took it in his stride a little bit better than uh, he's done in previous matches. No, so I mean, he even he even came back in one game too. Exactly. Know? So I think it's it's it was a good outing for Bioptic. Even though it was a loss, I think it was a better outing mm -hmm. than some of the other losses. Mm -hmm. I really think it shows, like, just goes to show as well. Like, he, he's good at prep. And if he maybe takes that play a little bit more aggressive and less let me switch out something here or there you know mm. um i think yeah, i've always he, said that um my optic is really good at prep it's just he's not getting the results and i hope right. this is a stepping stone in his confidence and getting in both prepping and getting the results that he needs i yeah. mean guys that, that's not underestimate i mean uh he he was one of the few uh to actually beat me last year yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I think he, he had the tool. And, of course, I mean, we can talk about plays at not plays, but at the end of the day, he's good at prepping and, you know, he preps on the things that you don't think is going to come. And he has a solid team. And there is just, uh, I want to see a bit more consistency for, for the next uh, weeks. And I think he can definitely do it. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go back. Let's see what you can do. <laughs> so, might as well segue from talking about how I switch it with that with the Wiggly Tough into my game. Uh, yeah. Welsh Waylords 2-0 versus the Merseyside Marowax. So, yeah. I believe, so just a little bit of preface. Uh, the Marowax is the team with the, uh, not hard trick room, but three trick room setters with Glastria, obviously one of the best trick yeah. room sweepers in the meta game. Um, mm. And they've also got some speed swap tech. So, I've obviously I've got my thoughts on the match, but it's useful to get the insights of you guys. So, I I was surprised at how much damage Nine Tails did. Yeah, yeah. Um, like freeze dry. I think I think that was a sweet match. Yeah. If I'm wrong, I'm. Oh, no, it's the same good. match. It's a freeze dry. Good. Into Neuvern yeah. and uh, non resisted right, right. into Marok. Yeah, yeah. No, it's the same match. Yeah, and it it really put in work. And I think that, that having freeze dry on both uh, your your nine tails and your yeah. Arctivish, Arctivish was yeah. was really smart. Um, simply yeah. because you you cover that water, like that potential Blastoise stuff, and that's that came into play. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, honestly. I am very proud of uh, of you, Metric, because at the end of the day, um, I think I think as a, a bit of a nerve wracking uh, game, because uh, Rebombi is one of those mon that, uh, in my opinion, you need to get rid of as soon as possible. So Rebombi, Sableye, uh, Pulon, uh, Grimstar, mm -hmm. I mean, those are, yeah, exactly, comfy especially, uh, those mons that you need to get rid of them as soon as possible because they're gonna stay there on the field and be annoying and not make you do what you want to do. So sometimes it's also better to f switch your focus from uh, art, those art eaters like, I don't know, Matt Gross or uh, Marowak or whatever it is, and just focus to pin down those support demands that then without support, uh, I mean, because at the end, if the opponent makes a degree, uh, greedy play with not defending their supporters and they, and they lose it without having uh apply the strategy then for you that's a game winning play at the end of the day i mean for this case for bombi yeah, i'm i mean i'm a bit more uh, confident with the matchup because i i kind of uh, looked over it uh before uh the recording so yeah i mean at the end of the day uh scarf ninth was uh was a good tag uh especially because guaranteed uh your uh that you were you were faster so, because, I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at this, I mean, of course, Rebombi has this ability that he doesn't get the, um, the secondary like, effect secondary from effects. the moves, right? Uh, and in this case, Icy Wind would have gone uh, into both Rebombi and the, the like the, his partner or his or her partner, depending on his train. And, uh, and then the partner still sticks with the minus one in, uh, in, in speed. And so I think this was really important because if you do a speed swap, it's going to speed swap only the stats and not the, the actual value you have at that moment. So, yeah, yeah I feel like that taking advantage of this mechanic was really important. And also having this really fast freeze drive for Neuvern, which not, I mean, I was kind of 
uh, puzzled why the the yachi berry was on a mungus and not on iron because a mungus is is quite bulky mm. and can take a like a blizzard from nine belts, I think, if spread, if trained correctly. Mm -hmm. But Neuver definitely don't. So yeah. I think it was a bit underestimating uh, nine tails there. I was, also, I was also surprised that there was no focus sash on the yeah, yeah Neuver. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing that surprised me. I was fully expecting when I hit the Neuver, it was going to be sashed and it wasn't. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that's a bit weird. And the fact that he stayed in that turn one with the Barris Scooter when he led it, and I was able to just freeze dry it in its face and destroy it. He, I think that was a miscalc on his part. He'd calc for a, um, what was it? A, a, like, no, a timid, a timid, yeah. a timid um, nine tails without any special attack investment. Yeah, but you were modest and max uh, special attack. Yeah. <laughs> so. That was unfortunate for him, but uh, that was just talking about game one. Um, yeah. The hail mode was pretty useful in this matchup. I actually, it was a last minute addition to my team plan, the hail mode. And it was just to cover it, like if he was going to do any of that speed swap stuff. And when he came to the team preview, and there was no trick room setter. There was no yeah. uh, Glastria. And I was just sat there going, it looks like it's hail mode. It's time to shine once more. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, hail used... mode was was going was too good, and I don't understand why he didn't bring Blaster. To be honest with you, because I mean, okay, it's Cavalier. Uh, no, it, yeah, it, again, okay, uh, you have, have Metagross, but uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it's I think it's a fair matchup because if you set up Trick Room and then you start boosting with Steel Spike, then it can. I mean, uh, a Glacier can face a Metagross because you have Max Quake and Grimne, which are then going to allow yeah. you to overcome this. And, you know, Marowak as well. I mean, I don't understand why he didn't want to play Marowak in Trick Room. I mean, last year, Marowak, he was my MVP for the whole season. He brought in, like, something, uh, pl 20 plus kills. And, I mean, of course, the other Marowak, of course, he was the grand, the grand one. But he's, yeah, it's the same. <laughs> And I think that is important. Um, I, I looked at, like, just on team preview as you were going into the match. I was like, where are all of the Merseyside Marowak things? You know, like, I, I felt like going into it, you know, like, you, you you could bring that Marowak and you could bring that last year. And they would be, like, major threats. Um, but you decided to go with, like, Tailwind Speed Swap stuff? And, yeah. I, and also Among Us. I, I was kind of confused by that. Don't yeah. forget Among Us. Among Us in Trick Room is sporting everything. It's like... Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super annoying. I mean, okay, Aromati... No, okay, uh, Drumpa, but... And Aromatis, but... And still. if you if you did have that um, that Trick Room mode as well, you, you wouldn't have to use Yachi Berry on Definitely. Among Us. Like, you, you yeah. didn't have to in the first place, but, I mean, that just gives you all the more reason to use... Yeah potentially something different no. the, uh, i mean i think you can bounce back from this i mean i i yeah, believe sure. on the marowaks and they have a good mm -hmm. team at the end of the day it's really just i mean my, my personal suggestion get away from ally switch because it's a bad move uh it's a it's a too high risk mm -hmm. and low reward kind of move and try it again uh more uh comprehensive strategy more harmonic i mean they can seem boring but they works, you know, that's the thing. So it's like you redirector, trick room, uh, follow me or whatever it is, you get the the sweeper in, you use those three turns to KO as much as you can, and then you try to reserve your trick room setter if you need another trick room to set up. Or I don't know, you have in the back a really fast mon, and then that could be barrescued or whatever it is, and then that maybe it can sweep a late game with a life orb or a choice band. And so mm -hmm. I think this a bit more harmonic game plan could have uh, granted the W here for the uh, Maroc side. Sorry, uh, Matrix. No, I mean, um, I, my, my biggest issue with uh, this week is that, yeah. that, 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 this last week, is that usually I like leaning into my opposition's trick room. Yeah, I, I'm usually really good with my with my trick room, and I'm usually able to lean into it and surprise people when I play them at their own trick room, like I did with you last season. And 
this week just wasn't that week to do it. I had to play outside of Trick Room. I, I couldn't match his Trick Room. So I was worried with my prep, looking over, how am I going to stop him from getting that Trick Room up? It's something yeah. I've not actually had to do before, stopping the opponent from getting their Trick Room up. And, and even... Sorry. I was just going to yeah. say that with the redirection he has on Amoongus, with the um, multiple Trick Room setters that he has there was never going to be a guaranteed way that I can stop him from setting Trick Room. It was always going to be a difficult uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. And even with the things you brought, like I think Amoongus, Trick Room Setter, Glass Cheer, Marowak probably would have put uh, quite a dent into your, uh, from what I saw, that what you brought at least. Like I think Glass Cheer with maybe something like a Max Steel Spike and Marowak with Max Flare, like they really kind of hurt a lot on your team. Yeah. It kind of stops that hail mode. Mm -hmm. uh, you you have Max uh, Phantasm for Spectrier, and I forget what else you brought, but it like I I don't mean to say this lightly, but your your team is powerful in Trick Room, and right now I think trying to play outside of it without maybe bringing in a little bit of Trick Room or bringing in those powerful sweepers and maybe speed swapping them instead. Um, it's, it's a little it's difficult risky. to... It's I think he wanted to do a surprise factor with playing outside of Trick Room, but I feel like right. if that was going to be the case, he needed to faint that he was yeah. using Trick Room. Bring a Trick mm -hmm. Room setter, bring Glastria, just mm -hmm. so that it makes me go like, not out the back and go out the gate and go, oh, he's got no Trick Room. I can just run my hail mode here and just... Mm, run havoc on him he he needed that question he needed me he needed to make me question right. in team preview what's he going to do because as soon as you bring trick room and then you also bring rabombi like if you had glass year going fast that game with something like a steel spike like again i I've, I've said it before but i think that having the option to trick room and then also having that yeah like very powerful sweeper Please that swap. can really set up, get bulky, and deal a whole bunch of damage and just keep rolling. Yeah, um, I think that's a major threat, and I, I don't think that you brought really a lot of what threatened Matrix's team this yeah, year. Yeah, but definitely, definitely. Again, I mean, I can make another like uh, example of from last season, right? I mean, one of my last, I mean, the very last addition to my team, and I was so pissed when I wasn't able to get it. Kadabra. It was Kadabra. Yes, mm -hmm. Skadabra because he could set up Trick Room and speed swap it to, to my attorney or like, not to my attorney, but my Marowak mainly, so that I could actually uh, be a threat outside of Trick Room. And there was actually a Colossal team that I bet because I, I was able to defeat the Colossal mode because my Marowak uh, was 91. And so, of course, this is like a, a tricky and, you know, a cheeky strategy but let's not forget that the surprise factor is not just about the Pokemon you bring. It's also mm -hmm. about the, the how you train your Pokemon to be and also maybe some of the sets, right? So, But you still have, need to have a reliable strategy. So in that case, I had At in the D, Marowak, and then a filler, which I don't remember which it was. Maybe it was Kadabra itself. But mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's it's important that you have the solidity of uh, maybe a four Pokemon solid core that feels good, right? That they are really strong. And then the other two that add some variance to the team and make it a bit hard to like go around and say, hey, in case you prepare really hard for these four months, then let's try to check also those and two and be a bit more creative. But also, yeah. I, I forget to ask, but did he lead like um, Rebombi Neuvern? Yes, I think, I, yeah, I think that, that that's. I think that's another no, sort of interesting didn't. thing. Oh uh, no! He, he led, I think they were he led Bombay, Bombay, um, Yeah, he led Barascuda. Bombay, Bombay, um, Barascuda. Yeah, yeah, and then you KO'd it with freeze dry. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's what happened with the surprise um, freeze dry. <laughs> I okay. didn't expect yeah, that to be faster. That nine sales. That very true. Very true. Um, yeah, never yeah. mind then. I thought he led. Then, Neuven. Last two games, no? The, well, just before we go, move on to the last yeah. two games, we never actually spoke about the game two and oh, the yeah. ally switch and the reads. Oh, you, 
You you just and you also, straight up read he, he every time. out on his um team preview. So just the first four months came. I think that's how it's yeah. Out so works, right? what was interesting yeah. is that before we get into it, I picked my mons. I thought. You know what? I'm just going to use the exact same four again. I don't see how that's a bad option here. Like, I want to see what he's going to do. He might leave the Amoongus um, Blastoise Shell Smash tech um, this time around, but I could probably adapt to it in the game. But I noticed that he was just timing out, and it and he hadn't selected before the time and hit zero. And I was thinking, right, if he leads Rabombi, um, I think Rabombi Blastoise here. Blastoise. I know yeah. he's uh, timed out, and I know which the last two are in the back. But anyway, game one, game game two, he leads uh, Blastoise Rabombi, and well, he goes for an ally switch, doesn't he? I don't remember. <laughs> I think so. But, so uh, yeah, he goes for I the mean, shell I... smash with the Blastoise yeah. and an ally switch with Rabombi, and. I knew looking at this, uh, the, the two out front, what's the Rebombi going to do here? What can the Rebombi actually do? Like, if it goes for the speed swap, it's never going to outspeed my team, and he knows it. So it was kind of a, the only thing it could do is either switch out or it yeah. um, uses ally switch. And because of how he had used it in the game one, I kind of predicted he was going to go for an uh, ally switch there and set up a shell smash Blastoise. Um mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was very tempted to double up with a double freeze dry there, but I thought I'll play it safe. Yeah. Just freeze dry one and set my own um, Aurora Veil up. I I actually saw that. I was like, just just go for the freeze dry, you know. Uh, I I was watching that specifically that second half or the second game there, and I I th I thought it was great how you just predicted it because not only did you not even hesitate to really target the Rubombi slot because you knew it was going to be an ally switch. Um, but you also got your Aurora Veil up um, and really set yourself up to just absolutely dominate that game. I'm um, I, Looking yeah. back at it, I'm kind of happy I didn't double up into it because if he then still maxed the Blastoise mm -hmm. and it wasted his G-Max, his D Dynamax, because he, he used his Dynamax, and even though he'd Shell Smashed, both my Arctivish and my um, Ninetales were still outspeeding it. Yeah, and that's the thing that I was like, oh, I expected it. If you were going to shell smash, you'd at least uh, have the speed EVs to outspeed a um, Arctivish in hail, mm -hmm. because Blastoise is naturally faster than um, Arctivish. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. That's at the end uh, the problem, right? So I mean, there probably I mean that the timeout was unfortunate, and we all know that, but. Going for Ally Switch turn one, and yeah, I mean, I, at the end of the day, worst case, you kill the Bombi there, and you're good to go. I mean, exactly. it's a, it's one thing less to worry about, and then you take care with another with another couple of freeze dry, and uh, and yeah, you have a roll up up. So then you you come in with Metagross, and it's still quite rough from from his side I, to get out. Yeah, I think it's um, important to acknowledge Ally Switch being a crucial component of a strategy like that. Um, if you're not going to have something as consistent as like follow me, yeah. um, I, in my personal opinion, I think it's probably better to try and think of something else rather than rely on ally switch. And I know that you, uh, like you didn't mean to send those two out. You ended up timing out, but if that was part of your game plan, like, I don't think that's Ally Switch's job. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. we we I mean, in the community, we also talked about how Ally Switch is another form of redirection, right? So since he has yeah. priority plus two, and it's more or less like follow me. But in my opinion, it's not because at the end it doesn't ensure, and if you get it wrong, then mm -hmm. you just lose a mon and lose the time for the move. So yeah, that's uh, that's I you can I can I agree hundred percent on on the statement that. Ally switch is it's a move that you need. I mean, it's a strong move, uh, but it's too risky and the reward is too low uh, to actually be consistent for a strategy. And you have to use ally switch in the correct way, or it's mm -hmm. completely a useless move. And and that's kind of a difficult thing to assess, really. And it, but generally, I would say if you don't plan on using it again or if it seems unexpected and it helps you in some way 
like, okay, maybe you use it then. But if you're going to be using it on a Rebombi next to a Blastoise, like yeah. something that wants to shell smash and would like to have redirection to cover it, and it's kind of obvious that you're going for an ally switch. I um, think the yeah, issue there was that he was wanting to lead Amoongus with Blastoise and the timeout is uh, what yeah. caused the issue. Like I think that's what his whole game plan was on that side yeah. of things. I think if he had mm -hmm. turned one, it'd gone for Sunny Day and Shell Smashed, then a different story because of he would have set would have reset my hail. Um I would have had to have swapped out or something. I wouldn't have hit the Blastoise. My following turn, he's now faster than my um Art Divish. And it, it it just helps him that little bit more. So, mm -hmm. but because of, I knew there was the Alice switch, he was willing to use it. Um, I was able to predict that later on. I knew he was going to target my Nine Tails, and I swapped in the Spectria with my safety goggles uh, to protect it from uh, Spore. And I knew he was going to set Sunny Day at the time that he was going to. And it was just a, it was just a game full of making the correct reads. And I know it was unfortunate for him that he did timeout on selection, and so he wasn't using the exact game plan he wanted to use. Um, but I think that's what ultimately won the match, was just consistently reading Honestly, what he was going to do. Yeah. Honestly, I think that goes back to sort of what we've talked about with two other teams already. Like, And on this, it's a little bit different because you you, you didn't exactly choose your leads to be unexpected. But I think regardless of what you had on your team i think if you played unexpectedly like you you didn't go for that ally switch and you had instead like i mean like you were saying like go sunny day um shell smash you know if they're predicting the the ally switch and your blastoise isn't going to be targeted that turn why ally switch you know mm -hmm. um and i think playing playing outside of the box is really something that's been a little bit of a focus this week um on the ends of the on the ends of the teams that have lost and even on some of the ones that have won um but do so properly i guess <laughs> alice which is a move <laughs> yeah alice which is a, a move best used when your opponent doesn't expect it and when it helps you and when it can hurt you because your opponent expects it that's when i would really start looking into what can I do here on this specific turn that will really bring me into an advantage, you know? Yeah, Ali Switch, yeah. again, is one of them moves that, yeah, it can provide you a game-winning turn, but it can just as easily end your entire game. So yeah. it, it, it's it, high risk, high reward. So I think that's enough talking about my game. Um, mm -hmm. And we should move on to the Card of Kamala's versus the Amateur Alchemies. Now, we don't have any footage from this match. It was a 2-1 win for the Alchemies. Um, Kabutops from the Cardiff Kamalas really popped off uh, this week with six, seven kills, wasn't it? Seven kills. Wow. Uh, wow. Against yeah. a team with Galarian Moltres, uh, Lapdo uh, Lapdos, uh, Lapras G-Max, and I believe Copperaja was uh, one of their other sweepers that the Alchemies used. Yeah. Honestly, I think that it's um uh, that's smart to bring Kabutops there because you you see the the Lapras and the uh, Moltres and you're like, wow, rock type moves from a fast like offensive Pokemon that somewhat resists both of their moves is kind of a good option, and I think that it's nice that he was able to point that out and. Uh, really prioritize on that and i think that the seven kills on kabutops really goes to show that yeah and the issue is is that the card of kamala's other offensive mons are the likes of dragapult which is weak to both of them um it's right, yeah. um venusaur which is again weak to both of them so mm -hmm. and not and yes venusaur has a weird matchup with the lapras but if it's a g max lapras getting that um Getting the screens up, it's it's always going to be that little bit more difficult for a Venusaur. Yeah, you can get the sunny day up with the Prankster Lipard and uh, Sleep Powder. Sleep Powder stuff might have been fun to see that week, I don't know. Yeah, so obviously we don't know exactly how the games turned out, uh, just the well, well, how they were played, but we've got the results and can only really mm -hmm. speculate from there. Yeah. But, I think another interesting thing is that uh, Kaparaja actually 
picked up five kills. Mm. Yeah, Cop, he's brought Cop Raja both times, both weeks one and two, and it's done. It's put in work. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got good coverage. Yeah, it does, and it gets a power whip, doesn't it? Yeah, it power does, whip yeah. does. Yeah, to help with uh, Kabutops. So that's I. I don't know if he brought it or not, but that would have been good to see. You know, um, or smart of him, I guess. And also, you're looking at again alchemy. <laughs> it's, it's it's an underrated yeah. support mod, in my opinion. Yeah, it it is very good, especially with uh, something I like love. Him. I love alchemy. I mean, it prevents you to go to sleep. It prevents you to get it toned, and then you can also decorate yourself. It's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. free weakness policy boosts can be. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah. I try to think if I can find the set that uh, they brought this last week. Um, to I speak to Dragon previously, but now we can see so far is what he's bringing this next week. <laughs> I don't even know who he plays. Um, <laughs> oh, there you go. So he had Altaria, didn't didn't they? So they used Altaria for Tailwind, uh, if I'm not mistaken. They had Power mm -hmm. Whip, Play Rough, Iron Head, Heat Crash on the Copperaja, really getting that wide variety of moves to uh, hit his team with. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not surprised that Copperaja did so much. Um, and Speed Swap Raichu. Oh. So he yeah. used Speed Swap Raichu, I think, with Lapras and Copperaja. And obviously... It's not outspeeding a Dragapult, but a Dragapult is hard pressed by a um, team that includes Lapras, Moltres. Um, it, it's just just a bad matchup for a Dragapult. Right. So I think uh, a bit of speed swap tech got in there, and maybe it was outspeeding the Kabutops outside of rain, and who knows, who knows. Right. But then our last match of the, this last week is the Somerville Scraggies versus the Aggie Slash Blades. And that was only played today, wasn't it? And yeah, straight right. out the bat, poor, poor Tyler. He forgot to check the abilities of his team and brought a Comfey with Flower Veil instead of Triage. Mm -hmm. That's so sad. Which, let this be a reminder for everyone that abilities... And your mons need checking before you play your games. Yeah. I almost uh, forgot that this week I had an Intimidate Arcanine. And things would not have gone the same. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, Otter, for checking your team before the match. <laughs> I, I know. I know. So I think it is something just important. Double check. Like, even if you're yeah, just going obviously. into the game and looking through. Like, literally, I have a like a checklist of things to check you just check the abilities check the moves check that the ev stat numbers are right and you're done so we haven't got any video to be able to watch this back or anything because i haven't got the links to the matches if he even has them still but if i remember correctly the scraggies managed to pick up maybe one or two ko's um in total um and the aggie slash blades i think was a six six kill sweep for the um aggie slash I think it got mm -hmm. like six KOs yeah. in the two games. I don't even think he brought the rain mode. Um, he just brought it to the team preview. Um, but it was Aggie Slash, uh, Reggie Lecky, was it? Mimikyu and um, <laughs> Electivire. <laughs> God, that mod's yeah. underwhelming, but it yeah. seemed to work. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't have uh, much insights. I mean, yeah, none of us really have insights. Yeah, it regardless, about so. context. Yeah. So I think, I think also this the the blade, the Aggie slash blades. It's kind of hard to justify if the game would have gone a lot differently if Comfo actually had the ability it had. Like I believe the Scraggies mm -hmm. only realized midway through game one when it didn't move first. And yeah, yeah. and that's probably a situation where like. Hey, that would have mattered. Yeah, exactly. It's one of those situations where it probably would have got the damage it needed to do once it, you know, from Comf after the boost from Comfe. And yeah. he never brought Comfe again after that. So he had to adapt his whole game strategy, game plan. And it's difficult when your game plan hinges on a particular mon and it's just rendered 
ineffective, not because of what the opponent's done, but your own uh, mistake. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't think this game is telling of what each side's strengths really are due to a mishap that happened in preparation rather than execution. Right. And I, I, I do have to say that, honestly, it is a little frustrating because I, I do like the Aegis Slash Blades team. Like, it's Rain with Reggie Alecki yeah. and Electivire. And I, I personally, I don't know too much about what Electivire does. So I would have enjoyed being able to see this match um, just as much as enjoying. I would have enjoyed seeing it, like, last week too. But yeah. now we're going into two weeks, and I don't know who he faces this week, but it's sort of a... I think it's the Dark like, Lord Greninja's. Uh, yeah. Um, it's sort of a thing where I don't know too much about the team. No, I know. Um, Hopefully he can find his switch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be nice. So, okay. I think we'll move on from here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so the overall leaderboards for the week, we'll just re quickly recap. So we've got myself and the Welsh Waylords just at the top of the lead at the moment for the time being. Um, I think it's just on a, like a kill yeah, with my kill kill to death ratio being uh, differential being like eleven, and then you've got yourself um, oddball um, with your Osh with your Orlando Oshawats just below me with like uh, plus ten KD. Mm -hmm. um, we've got the South Korean Saws, another um, lossless team. Uh, they just a little bit below, uh, followed by the Amateur Alchemies, the only other lossless team. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. From there, we've got, but they have lost a set, which is why they're just uh, in fourth. So we've got the Aga Slash Blades in fifth, uh, but it's a kind of a pseudo positioning because obviously they've got a game left to make up yet from missing the week one match. Um, and then just hanging in sixth is the Chroma Colossals, which is the highest placed uh, win and loss team. Mm -hmm. So just a little uh, visual here. But uh, we'll move on from this. So we've got the division rankings from last week. Um, so this is what me, Masenko, and Brian decided on um, for the positioning of the teams based on our initial draft rankings, uh, yeah. followed by the results of week one. So going into week two, uh, we're going to try and position them all again based on all the new information we've got from the games being played and uh, taking into consideration some of the trades that have taken place. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll exit out of this and we will edit it on screen and you guys can uh, tell your thoughts about yeah. it. So we started looking at this a little bit before we uh, began recording. So this is the initial rough uh, draft of where we think that the, the, gonna, the, the teams are, but we're going to just talk through a little bit more now and uh, any thoughts? Uh, important note, London Lucario's picked up a redirector. They yeah. did. Oh. They, they did. They've picked up uh, Tangrowth for Cofagrigus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's massive. An excellent trade, in my opinion. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially because now with Torkoal and they will be able to use his chlorophyll ability for Tangrowth, then it's a, re it's a, it's a threat. I mean, you can sleep powder stuff, and yeah, and we, not only that, but they, yeah, not only that, but they also like gained a decently offensive grass type if it wants to be. Yeah, I mean, Tangrowth, of course, uh, it wouldn't be my my favorite grass type to to hit mm -hmm. it really hard, but it's definitely something that tanks the hit and it makes a. I mean, it sleeps some still hurts quite a lot. So and, and when you when you have something like Torkoal and a lot of mons that are weak to, uh, like hit weak to water and ground specifically. Yeah. Um, having an option against those types is strong, regardless of if yeah, it's yeah, rock as well. No, it's like uh, uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I, I really think that it was it's, a good pickup, and yeah. I honestly don't think they deserve to be in sixteenth anymore. Well, yeah, last, last week. No, I'm not sure with the the play. Actually, I, I don't want to say too much, but. I think it's as important. Just At the important to moment, note it. I position them as 16th as they're the only team to actually not take a single set yet. Yeah. I don't think they've taken a single game. Yeah, they've not taken a single game yet, uh, individ an individual game. I believe every other team has at least taken one. Um, including... yeah, that's why I think the Lycanroc should be at 15 for the pure 
reason yeah. that they've taken a set. Yeah. And I, even though even though they do have that new option, I'd like to be able to see them actually implement it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before I rank them any higher, though it is an honorable mention. That's kind of where I'm at with the team at the moment. Like, yes, the pickup was a great addition, but until I've seen them implement that, I don't mm-hmm. really want to overrank them yet because of all we've seen so far in two games in the two matches he's played he's lost all four sets which is still beginning of season it happens uh, but he's only picked up two three KOs maybe and he's not even been able to implement his own game plan yet right um, um, I think another thing that we can consider is maybe putting the Southeast Lux Rays above the Somerville Scraggies Okay. Um, the Southeast Lux Rays are one of the only teams that uh, haven't actually won a game yet, mm-hmm. wherefore the Scraggies have won against the Crimic Colossals. Yeah, but, but did, I, did, I feel like it was close enough to where, yeah, like in both games, um, he may have lost like two and nobody picked. He picked up five kills the first game, I, I, or like the first week. I didn't see much of that week. Mm hmm. But coming into this week, he he felt really strong in the matchup. And even though he lost, like, make maybe one or two different plays and he won 2-0, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. So we're working from the bottom still. We've got Lilico Lagan Rocks, which I think are fair to move them up to at least 15th from uh, mm-hmm. them taking at least one set. And I know most of that set was down to a yeah. very lucky hit. Um, it's still a set win. Maybe there were other things that we were missing. I still think that they were taking more ca- kills and implementing whatever game plan they have a little bit more effectively than yeah. what the Lucarios have been mm-hmm. doing. We've got yeah. the and I, th- I really think they they showed off that. Ironically, despite us saying that that little core of Umbreon, uh, Espeon, and what like Flareal, Lycanroc, or. I told you, like, he knows how to use uh, Umbreon and Espeon. I told yeah, you, like, he, 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 mm-hmm. I, I, I think that's probably a good thing to note as well, because you know, like he did pick up that KO, and he was able to um, pick up more KOs even beyond just that critical hit. Mm. Yeah. So then we've got the Cardiff Kamalas down at fourteen. Now their team is quite. I, I think it's one of the teams that I hate to face because it's a Venusaur team, to be honest. But mm-hmm. they've got Venusaur, they've yeah. got um, Sunny Day Prankster Lipard, they've got Dragapult, they've got Clefairy, they've got Kabutops, they've got... That's all from memory, I don't remember what else they have. Um, they've, oh, Silvali Silva as well. But they've got these Mons. Uh, they did manage to take a, take a game off the Alchemies this week, which I think is quite... Uh, are quite a feat because of the alchemies are quite though, had the advantage. I I would say though, um, with Kabutops, I'm almost curious as to whether that advantage is too much uh, on the alchemy side, or like is very present on the alchemy side, simply because Kabutops really does handle with like the major mons on that team. Yes, but it's a lot of work for a. Kabutops. It's I mean, still it did get seven kills. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I I really think that the Cardiff Kamalas deserve to be a bit higher up uh, yeah. as well. I, I, mean, I, I do think they deserve to be higher up than Dark Lord Ninjas. That's yeah. no, that's fine. I I don't disagree. I quite I like the Cardiff Kamalas uh, Cardiff Kamalas team. I faced mm-hmm. them week one and they prepped pretty well. They just got a little bit unlucky with some of their uh, stuff, like the double rock slide flint miss, yeah. for example. Oof. So I'm yeah. quite happy with that. The Dark Lord Greninjas, who did they beat this week again? I know we've just talked about Lucario. Lucario. Yeah, exactly. Ironically, yeah. the the people or the teams that played uh, Brian and I ended up facing each other whenever we faced each other as well. Yes, yes, I like see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The so okay, that's fine. Uh, the Dark Lord Greninjas, I think, I don't think they played bad. They they implemented their strategy well. They, they won yeah. the match. It was a copied strategy, obviously, from um, yeah. Brian, but... Yeah. Uh, I also just... Like, I don't want to put put him 
too far down because of inexperience, but he is an inexperienced player. Mm-hmm. Um, he he didn't know what justified was. That's true. I brought it, and it's being one of the major forms on my team, uh, or like one of the major modes. I think that not kind of looking into that and expecting only special Pokemon to show up and only bringing light screen on Grimmsnarl. Um, and then follow that up with a copied strategy, though implemented well, a copied strategy week two to beat a team that is as of up. right now lowest of the low. Um, I don't know that it's too reasonable to really push them above much though i do i do yeah. think that they've performed yeah. better than the you know what ones. um i i have a couple of alt takes here Go for so it. i have i mean on my personal uh power rankings i would say the cardiff kamala as 10 and the uh, lucarius as 14 at least and then i would switch down the rainy guys to 13 position and the scraggy somewhere 12 there Okay. And the reason why is like the rain a team. Um, I mean, after I studied this this team especially a bit, uh, because um, when I this is like a really strong team, right? But I realized that a lot of teams they have some prankster uh, sunny day, or they really have some really fast sunny days. And mm-hmm. the thing is that if you don't have another backup strategy. It's gonna hurt. I mean, okay, Rajiraki, okay, Kindra, okay, Politoed, but I mean, especially with this Electrifier, and then you have some other mo- modes that they're not really convincing. So, I mean, of course, people will try start ca- hard countering your uh, like super fast strategy, maybe with a Trick Room, maybe with uh, some other stuff that for you are gonna be so annoying. Okay, my champ. Uh, no, sorry, yeah, they have my choke. Okay, that they have my choke, and they have Mimikyu that can taunt and can reverse Trick Room and Edge Slash, which is good. But, I mean, if I see, for instance, uh, against the Marowak, they, they would struggle big times, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's but, also important to note that their only win was against someone who didn't have Triage Comfy. Yeah. 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 I mean, and I mean, as I said, um, the Scruggies, why I put Scruggies uh, before, because I mean, okay, Comfy, uh, that they have their Comfy strategy, uh, and, but, you know, I feel like they, they really need to start, uh, looking into a bit more creative strategies, like, I don't know, start using, uh, Togek is not just a redirector, but as, as a sweeper, and of course, Kudra is a really strong one, and uh, me and Matrix, we, we have already some experience with uh, with Kudra run by Owen, and uh, yeah. we were looking at it, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a solid mon, it's a solid pick. However, there is as much as Kudra can do, right? I, I was so impressed, the amount of damage that a Frostlass did to Kudra from Triple Axel. And yeah. Frostless is not the most offensive mod. And mm-hmm. so this to tell, I mean, it was a dynamite food, I think it did something like 60, 70%. So um, when I'm, when I'm looking at this, I'm saying, yeah, good is good, but you need to support it well. And the fact that you rely on a mode that actually needs a lot of support, then I'm afraid that you, you lose flexibility. But I can be wrong. I mean, I'm really happy if Tyler is able to show me that, that. Uh, he has a really solid draft and he can take out, I mean, of course, he has a Rage Rock that is, uh, is going to be also an important uh, strategy, but, and he's, Cobalion, of course. He's got Cobalion. Beat up Cobalion, yeah. The exact but same. those are like, yeah, three, you know, those are kind of three strategies that are three different ones that you can stop with some uh, courtesy, right? If you're faster than his beat up Mons, he cannot beat up. If you have like a special mom that can eat really hard Regirock, then it's a problem. And then if you have like something to check the good draw, then you're good to go. But yeah, you know, as I say, if you have something strong in Trick Room, you can definitely give him hard some hard time. But yeah, <laughs> that, um, that's my thought. Yeah. What's even more unfortunate is that he only actually picked up the Comfy this week through trades. 
and mm-hmm. so its first outing was unfortunate. Oh, close. oh yeah, the out of a uh, of comfy, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 fair. So we've got at the moment uh, reverse order. We've got Lucario's Lycan Rocks Greninjas, followed by the Eggy Slash Blades, because we still have yet to see what they can do. I feel the Somerville yeah. Spraggies in twelfth. Like, it's it's kind of hard to place them. Yeah. Anywhere really. We've got the like they, they have a win, and that's all we know. Yeah. Yeah. We got the Mesa. But Marowak, I would put the Marowak as eleventh. Uh, because as I mean, we were talking before that if they uh, put themselves this ally switch, uh, they go away from ally switch and they start having more consistent strategies with the cluster mm-hmm. in trick room and uh, Marwak in trick room. This is a dangerous team. You need to look out for this team, and I think this is going to be. I mean, it is a bit, it is a bit top heavy uh, as we all know, but that's scary. It is yeah. scary. And I believe they've pa- uh, they've picked up Pangoro this week, yeah. um, in place of Carvink, uh, yeah. which means they remove a trick room set. But honestly, Porygon and Claydol are it's better, fine. in my opinion. I mean, uh, Porygon is is okay. Uh, Claydol as well. I mean, that's uh, that's going to be a bit of a challenge. But yeah, I mean, I honestly don't like Claydol as a trick room setter. Uh, I would much rather go for Porygon. But the fact that those two Trick Room Setter, they have those uh, uh, completely different weaknesses, right? So mm-hmm. one is weak to Psychic and and uh, and yeah. uh, like Dark and the Water, whatever. And the other one that is uh, resisting fighting. and yeah, fighting, but it's immune to ghosts. It's uh, it's quite interesting. So you can switch it up. So and with Ivy Light, Porygon can tag more hit them. We think so. Porygon is actually yeah. surprisingly bulky. Uh, yeah. With the EV lights, and I mean, isn't it is just yeah. a budget Porygon too? But, yeah, but we were talking about this, right? So I mean, me and Matrix, we were talking, about, we were discussing about actually Trick Room Setter. Since in another league, I I picked up Porygon too, and I told him like, hey, I, st- I mean, definitely think that Porygon is also a valuable Trick Room Setter, especially and at Porygon. Porygon still gets eerie impulse as well, yeah. doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and foul play. Yeah, might not be foul play doesn't even. Though. Nice way to yeah. weaker. I mean, on. with a download boost, it gets a decent amount. I mean, Polygon yeah. 2, it's it's immorally good. I mean, uh, a plus one, it's a threat. But Polygon, it's it's a decent amount. You can actually do some damage. Mm. Yeah. So then we've like got it, the... It maybe... Hmm? Sorry, you were saying? Sorry, go ahead. I was, I, just, I was moving on. It but... doesn't matter. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Go ahead. So we've got, at the moment, the Kamala's in 10th. Uh, we've discussed uh, the reasons for that. Um, so then we enter the top nine. Um, are we happy with the placements here so far, or do we still need to move around a little bit and explain? Mm-hmm. Uh, I might move Bavarian Landers down. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I I really like Bayok this team. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't get... Um, I mean... He, he's really good, and he has a really solid team. I'm really looking forward for him to strive this season because, I mean, Axorus, Nidoqueen, Kadabra, Fini, Rillaboom, Driftlim as well. There are all months that give you so much creativity and so many options that, I mean, it's a, they are a threat. I mean, if I would have faced them uh, with some of the other teams below 10, uh, I would be really worried, really worried, mm-hmm. especially because of Tapu TV. Tapu Fini has I, Iron Defense, yeah. Calm Mind, tons of stuff. Sorry, Oddball. I know I'm talking a lot. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely fine. Um, I, I think it's important to make a distinction that yeah. I really think that all the teams nine and above are just better than the teams 10 and below as far as a culmination of performance and yeah. sort of... Uh, teams in general um because i mean like you were saying even if i were to put southeast lux rays against the cardiff kamalas like i would definitely be in favor of the southeast lux rays yeah even um, though we don't have to forget about this uh dragon Ball clefairy which is terrifying yeah. in my yeah yeah. My eyes. yeah no but um, manageable definitely yeah, but they and have that's, that's the as thing, well, though, because so. because um, like I, we've seen 
Bioptic be able to prep for things that are perhaps more difficult? Like he was able to prep for that um, Charizard Sableye and, yeah. you know, setting up sun like that. And even though that does really sound like something hard to stop if the variant Landis were to maybe bring Quash or something, um, he was able to almost take game one and then totally take game two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, that's fair. I, I, do we think the um, Bioptic deserves a place above Misenko's team? Um, that's difficult. Let me take another look again at Misenko's team, because I remember by heart most of it. Misenko, so, Ma- Misenko's first game was against the Aggie like, Slash Blades, but it never got fully played yeah, yeah. out. He did yeah. take a set mm-hmm. and then lost a set. And then this week, but it's got to be replayed. Um, he's got... This week he took that loss against the South Korean Saws with the mm. speed. And so right now I'm struggling to figure if I believe the Lux Rays actually deserve a spot higher than them because I feel like their plays have been a um, little better. Yeah. Okay. It's, so so um, you go ahead. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, uh, Masenko uh, can actually, I mean, I'm, if I'm looking at my Optus team, I. Um, I just say that this is, I mean, my Bioptic team is just better built. And I know that uh, Masenko is working on uh, patching some of the stuff. And we saw that he already did like four of these uh, five available trades. So I'm really looking forward to see uh, what he has for us. But uh, yeah, I think uh, like Bioptic thing is more solid from a, like, and you know, I'm gonna say if if the card is Kamala get a trick room uh, a good trick room setter, then I think they are also above uh, Masenko's draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and Masenko did say that he already knows what he wants for his fifth trade, and it should be coming this week as well from the previous video. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I think he's got I'm 25 gonna... points in hand as well to make that. Yeah, I'm I'm almost concerned about that though, if I have to be honest, like. Mm-hmm. Um, because as soon as he hits that last trade, he's finalized his team by week three. Yeah, for the rest of the season. Yeah, right. But we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what he does. It might be a killer it's, pick. It's it's another um, it's another sort of thing like the Age of Slash Blades. He's only played one match, and even yeah. though we have footage of that one match, it's one match where he was at a disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I think the Southeast Luxuries are fine at being at eighth. So we move on mm-hmm. to our, our top seven, which is the Charlotte B drills. Now, I think it's a fair position being a seventh, but I think we've got to decide between the Bavarian Landerus, the Chroma Colossals, and Charlotte B drills where exactly they lay. I honestly, I really don't like Bavarian Landerus being that high. I honestly, I think seven, six, and five just reverse them. Oh, like have uh, B drills at five, even though they took a tough loss. Like this this week, they were extremely dominant last week, and they had a sort of competitive game the second, uh, yeah, the second game of this week. And I... Marion Landers really just hasn't shown that much yeah. fighting spirit, I guess. Like, I mean, I'm, and this is something that probably uh, will, will also like pick up uh, in in other like scenarios. But I think that um, Brian's team has uh, a lot of common weaknesses, so this is something that uh, you need to patch Barry and, and maybe we can take a look together what what makes sense and what does not make sense mm-hmm. to to go for. But uh, yeah, I mean, of course, the sand core is really strong. You have a definitely strong to promote. Uh, we just need to understand if we want. Uh, I don't know. For instance, now we we doubled in the rock weaknesses, even though we have some resistance, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for instance, water is a threat if you don't bring uh, the 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 Cradily. Cradily. the plant. Yes, yeah, exactly. Plant. Thank you. So you know, yeah, that that's my way of calling it. The, the rock uh, is gigalit and the plant is cradily. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And yeah, but that's uh, that's something that we need also to keep in consideration because yeah. you cannot just have a full slot, you know, a slot for Cradley 
all the time. So we can think right. about that. Yeah, I, I think it's challenging to sort these three simply because Varian Landers has an excellent team, but sort of lackluster gameplay as of now. He hasn't really shone that, he hasn't really shone yeah. that team. It, he hasn't yeah. given the team that spotlight, uh, if you will. Right. Yeah. The Krimic Colossals, though, I think they have performed well. I don't, I'm not sure. I haven't. Yeah, the, fir- the first game was unfortunate uh, due yeah. to I, uh, um, in real life stuff. And then they took this this week's win and only really went to two and one due to a crit. So And they got a strong right. top and, heavy draft. But yeah, and the, but that's another thing. Like they, Although they are kind of showing that they can play well, they have a very top heavy team with very set in stone modes filled with leftover tier fours, you know? Mm. Um, and then the Charlotte Bee Drills, like they have strong yeah. modes now and they have the opportunity to to grow and they were completely dominant week one. Uh, it, it, it just makes each one hard to rank simply because they're all good and have shown their worth in different ways. Yeah, I definitely agree that these three are probably the more interchangeable, interchangeable of the rankings. Honestly, like, I'm, I could see I might either even... of the either of the teams being in either of the positions, oh. and it being a fair assumption, a fair I, I... Like, fair oh. session of the yeah um, yeah of the teams. I don't know if we did this before, but is there any way that we could like put them on even ranking? Or... Um, I think it's it's I I like the idea of keeping them separate because yeah uh, they, they just be like okay that's the one that we think at this moment just that gut feeling you know right um in that case i'm fine with it i'm fine with the order of that five yeah six, I'm, I'm fine with i'm fine with bavarian landris being last the only one i would really question is do you like a two one one two or do you like a two oh oh two you know yeah so, Carmen, any thoughts on that? Um, that's uh, that's really hard. I mean, as I said, I also agree that they are pretty similar. But, uh, yeah. I do find myself a bit unprepared. I mean, I also have... I mean, I don't know both teams and players so well that I can mm-hmm. say uh, something about it. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I remember the Bavarian Landerus, uh, as a player, he managed to at least make playoffs last season in Kalos, which is obviously the division that I uh, UGA champ came from. Yeah, Marcus, um, uh, Marcus's division, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marcus's. Um, and then the Chroma Colossals, I know from other leagues. Uh, he's, a, he's, a good, he's a good player. He's got creative prep, as I've said before. And then obviously we're all um, well. At least me and uh, me and Carmen are well familiar with uh, Brian's play style. Um, mm-hmm. That's not that's not to say, that's not to discredit. I realize that comes across thing. It's just like we're we're most familiar with how uh, Brian plays, um, so it's easier to assess. Um, I I, I think I think tempted, it's better. I would almost be tempted to put um, Kermit Colossals over the Beatles. Only I mean, because this week they we'll lost see, right? the game. Hmm? This week they're facing each other, no? Uh, yeah. yeah, they are. That is the matchup. Oh, well, that'll so decide. Maybe. Um, depends on who we want to get, have face as the underdog. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know I'm still um, stuck on planning for one certain Mon, so mm-hmm. I'm still working on my game plan for that. I think that's okay though. He's got a whole bunch of powerful Say, let's, mons. And... Let's let's keep it like this. I mean, I yeah. the yeah. the landers. Um, I mean, unfortunately, I don't know Funky's play style, but I know mm-hmm. he is coming from a, crit- a creative community, and I'm sure he's gonna show us good and some. Uh, I mean, the, like what the team deserves. So because we we said that it's a really strong draft. The, the other thing is that we need to see if he can stand up to the trick remotes that the other opponents is going to bring. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay, so we move on to our top four, which is currently the Alchemies, the South Coronasaurs, Oshawats, and the Waylords. Now, I think this is 
currently mirroring exactly the rankings of the um, power rankings, which is just here. And so I got the think exact it's mirror. for I think it's for the most part like accurate. I, yeah. I'm I'm yeah, good with Alchemy's being at four. Sorry, I'm I'm good at I'm good with Alchemy's being at four. Uh, the South Court on Soars, I am afraid of, and I have learned to respect them. And I might put them higher than three, but you know, like that's not that's just based on matchup, not really uh, results. I think the Darmanitai trade really helped them. Yeah, and and not only that, but regardless, they have a strong team and they have strong strategies that we've been able to see this week. And yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Let's let's fun. let's wait till next week. I mean, yeah, I would say that this is fine for the for the most part. And uh, yeah, we will see mm -hmm. what we're gonna, what, how it's gonna, uh, came out like next week because we have uh, five versus six and uh, two against three, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. How do you? Um, who do you? Who do you face this week, Matrix? Um, I face a team. Oh, I face Msenko. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's true. Um, okay. So I don't know. We'll see. I'll we'll we'll take Msenko. Because we'll I think I think uh, both Brian and I have tough games this week. I have a tough game, but more mentally. <laughs> I'm I'm not going to talk about your game because I'm helping the other person. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I mean, I'm helping Matrix, so it's it's okay. Uh, <laughs> no, so yeah, I've we've got myself ranked at number one at the moment. Although mm -hmm. I hate uh, self praise, but uh, it's there based on what you guys have suggested from last week anyway so yeah. there's no need to really yeah, you, you, take it you, too much you played really well you have a good team like all around you're top of the leaderboard uh statistically as well um i i mean i think you deserve it you know it's fine it's time there's plenty of time to fall from grace so <laughs> <laughs> we've yeah. got um so Basically, this is our finalized ranking then. So we can just quickly see here that uh, last week we had a, a few, we had quite a few shifts really from week to week. Um, really, the South Court on Soars jumped up though. Yeah, they've really jumped up. Yeah. They played really well, to be honest, and the prep was good. The trades mm -hmm. have been good. It really showcased their team, I think, this week. Yeah. So, and then we've got uh, Bioptics taking it number eight. That he's just hanging in there in eighth. But uh, mm -hmm. other than that, a few changes down the bottom, but relatively the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've, uh, it, it, I, I'm, happy, I'm happy with uh, leaving that as it is. Um, yep. I'll screen cap this and uh, post it into the channels later. We go over the um, trades before going into the um, week three predictions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we can we can uh, go over the trades now, which I believe so, has someone got the trades up there. Yeah, so the trades from week three. Um, we've got the Drowsy Drac results doing a team trade with the Mersey Marowax, uh, Merseyside Marowax for the addition of Machamp G Max for the Drac results and the Merseyside Marowax gain the Copperage G Max. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I, I'm not sure I'm, how that will impact either side, really. If I'm being honest, I don't think it matters this week. Though, yeah. in general, I am also not sure that it's a good trade. Exactly. But, I'm I'm still a bit unsure on it myself, to be honest. Just, I mean, even just looking at Kavaraja from another team, like it's put in work, mm. and Machamp has not from anywhere else. I don't know. Yeah. Um. There might be some, and his team isn't really that physical. So even the coaching, there's a wide guard, there's quick guard. So from the, like a supportive Machamp set, yeah. it does get access to like bullet punch and. But... I mean, we know Masenko how creative it is. He can do creative stuff. But I agree with you. I'm I'm not sure about this trade. Why it happens in the in the first place? It'd be but interesting. I... To see. Yeah, I, I'm more interested in the one that comes afterwards, right? So, oh, Stagataga yeah. for Clefty. Yeah, I think that's a good trade. I mean, yeah, so Stagataga you is... Uh, prankster, you, you got rid of Prankster Riolo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, Stagataga is, is... I think it's a really good Trick Ramon. 
Uh, I mean, the the screen support is going to be important. I mean, we will see. Um, you know, he doesn't really have much that could have taken advantage of that trick room, to be honest. True. True. What is Only essentially? Sarah, Sarah. Yeah. What is essentially done is gone. All right. I don't want trick room. I'm not going to run a trick room mode. And he's kind of just mm -hmm. traded away all them pieces and to fortify his other modes, like boosting his defenses a little bit with the Clefty yeah. prankster, which is fair. And hopefully he's able to, into the future weeks, get a way to prevent trick room. I feel like he becomes a little bit trick room weak um, as a result. But His only real way is imprisoned trick rooming with um, Rapidash. Rapidash. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't have taunt, does he? Uh, uh, the, the, he doesn't get it. Well, no? yeah, but that's mm. like impotent as well. Yeah, impotent. Oh, yeah, he's got impotent. I hate that thing. He's got he's got fake out on Kangaskhan and then Trimpidim. taunt from impotent, and that's about it. Which kind of scares me, considering um, if you're going to be running like no trick room mode, you want a way to consistently stop trick room. Yeah, but that's uh Kangaskhan gets like, you know, Kangas Khan but... gets a uh, scrap fake out. So yeah. Well right, but like what's that going to do against a Dust Clops? You you're not going to kill it in one turn. Yeah, you're gonna just gonna protect the Dust Clops. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just a, a t <laughs> delayed term. Oh, well man. we'll see what then trades have uh, yeah. store yeah. later on. Yeah. But we've got the Merseyside Marax. I've already touched upon their trades. They've got the Copperage G Max from uh, uh, the Drac Assaults, which again, it's Machamp for Copperage. It's not, I don't think it, it kind of adds more to the Trick Room, I suppose, but that's another mm -hmm. mom inside their Trick Room that's weak to fire. So, yeah. And fighting yeah. and ground. Wait, ground doesn't super better against one. But yeah, it's just, mm, I don't know. It's another physical Trick Room mom. Um, I mean, the, as I said, I don't think this uh, benefits uh, any of the of the of both of them. You know, so yeah. That's that's an okay trade. We will see how they're gonna use it. Maybe they have some strategies that, that at the moment they are like obscure mm -hmm. to us. But yeah, they've got uh, Carbink for Pangoro as well. I'm always yeah, hesitant that, to draft a Pangoro. Yeah. I mean, Bangori is a budget two people, right? So yeah, strong, kind of. Um, it's not as great happy as Urshifu, but yeah. And I don't there. think it's. I don't think it's... A, it has the Scrappy, so it can't get um, intimidate drop. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a dark okay. type, so you can't put in a um, prankster move into it. I, I mean, it's okay. Thing. Yeah, but. I mean that's that's interesting. You you need to have a. I mean they they have a really st uh, strong trick from core, and I think Pancor and Trickroom can do good. Uh, Carping, I'm like, yeah, it makes sense that you you kind of got rid of it. Yeah, I agree. Um, so then we've obviously said about the London Lucarios who traded the Cofagrigus for the Tangrowth, and we don't need to go into that too much. We said that near the start, yeah. and yeah. it's a good trade. So yeah. I think it's a really beneficial trade, and I'm really looking forward to see how they utilize that going forward. Right. And then lastly, just towards the end of the week, we got the trade for you, Brian, with the slow bro yeah. for the Volcarona. Yeah. Increasing your rock weakness, doubling up on fire type, removing a trick room setter, but also providing you with a decently speed speed tiered mon at 100 and a redirection. It's as yeah. fast as mon now. It's tied, tied with Entei, isn't it? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is again, I mean, they're both fire types, so yeah, which is, I don't know. Yeah, white floor. Uh, I'm definitely looking to upgrade the roster, but yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm also interested in. I mean, North Carolina is okay. North Carolina is okay. Uh, but yeah, let's let's see because uh, as I said, then the risk is that you need to keep your credibility on the on the field. I mean, not on the field, but bring it at least to team review. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, let's, let's see how it goes. Okay, so they're the trades for the week. Uh, moving on, we'll have a look at the uh, matchups for the following week and just briefly touch upon them. So first up, we've got the London Lucarios versus the Cardiff Kamalas this week. And if we move to this, which I have got up somewhere. Uh, open crap sheet. So Once we un un uh, fog it. 
Yeah, so um, we've got the London Lucarius versus the card of Kamalas. Can you guys see it? Mm -hmm. Not yet. Right, two seconds. Oh, God, don't want to do there you go. There we go. Yeah, that's okay. fine. I'm not editing that out. Um, so, initial predictions as to who you think will win? Hmm. Now that we have the upgraded Lucarios. I like the card of Kamal this year. Uh, a lot, actually, because um, you, you have that option with Venusaur and Lipard just to get going, and there's really not much that the opponent can do about that, other than maybe, like, Turtonator, because Torkoal itself just helps it anyways, um, and is weak to maybe an Earth Power. Uh, mm. I think you also you also have options on the card of Kamala's to play a little bit into the Trick Room, though I wouldn't like it being set up um, with the Marowak, the Grapple Locked could be interesting, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, guys, that's something that we, we can think about. It's like also that you have uh, Tangro now, yeah? and this means that he's not going to be only benefiting the Cardiff Kamalas from Sun, but also Tangro itself, which can put right. to sleep. And we know the Kabuto is four time weaknesses to to grass. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, okay, Sigilif. Uh, that can just like spam hypnosis or do sigilly stuff with Tailwind and set up Trick Room. I mean, but or in prison Trick Room, sorry. But that's uh, I mean, I think that the London Lucarius they have uh, they have ways to to work on this, right? So even Palisand, right? Palisand can be uh, can be I think can be good now, but Dragapult is also. A threat, right? So I, I also think Glaceon is good here. Um, yeah, Glaceon yeah. is it's kind of it's uh it's kind of good. Um, but the question is, will we be able to set up Trick Room? Because if he set up Trick Room, then uh, mm -hmm. he's gonna shine. I mean, he has Azumarill and he has uh, a Tangro. Something that I feel this this team is lacking a bit is like a lightning rod for Azumarill. Uh, yeah. Because Magneton is really strong. And of course, he doesn't like this uh, double ground. But what can you do? So it's, uh, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, after looking at this another time, Escavalier can be super good from London Carriers, but Cardiff Kamalas, if they have this Alping and Adamant Dragapult, like maybe also Safety Goggles, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, desktop is not well spread then that's going to be damage. And also, a Clefairy has after you, so, you know, you say, why should I taunt it when I can just kill it? Yeah. 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 And uh, that's, you, you, Sorry, you bring you up a good point about the Clefairy. Like, uh, many times I used uh, Togepi in draft leagues with after you. It's... Mm -hmm. if you, So there's, there is ways that the Kamalas, yeah. if they prep well, they if they do find themselves inside that trick room, they do have ways to take advantage of or turn the situation around. Yeah. I mean, I honestly predict a 2-1 a yeah. for the Cardiff Commanders, uh, yeah. especially because if they play well, the London Lucarius and, like, send some corbo ball, like some, you know, tricks to the Cardiff Commanders, we it will be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so I, I think be. I also agree. I think if the Lucario's based on their trade, uh, the Tangrove really helps them for this matchup. Um, but I'm not sure if uh, it'll, they'll be enough to find them to win the match. I think the Cardiff Kamal's have been playing well in the past few games, uh, just been a little bit unlucky here and there. So I think they, they'll take this game. I don't know what the score will be, but I reckon the Kamal's will win. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next uh, one. So the next one we've got uh the your match, uh oddball versus the South Korean source. I'll go ahead and let you guys talk about that one. Cool. I um, can't really see it. Yeah, it's a bit blurry. Uh, sorry, I'm gonna have to do this every time I uh 
swap out. There you go. Okay. So. so uh, no, uh, after you. After no, you. sorry. You, you, you start with this one. Uh, we know uh, Tornadus is nasty. Tornadus, I think it's, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, a lot of uh, things uh, like, you know, tailing support, taunt. Uh, however, the and also in D can can stop the whimsy cut. And imagine like Tailwind plus stuff uh to stop Arcanine or Darmanitan as well. Darmanitan scarf with uh in D helping Gant or you know, you have a lot of stuff. And of course, among which also you have the Terrakion lead. So I see I see this as a really tough match because on the other hand uh, we have the Orlando Oshawats that have to deal somehow with this super fast mode. And um, you have, of course, Nayaliko that can be good. So it's like uh, he can uh, redirect and set up Trick Room and then be nasty with a, with a Meteor Beam since it, it hits more or less all of, more or less everything except the uh, Terrakion actually, but you can find a way um then you have Kruko to intimidate but yeah this is i think this is going to be uh a t like one of those matches played in trick room with a uh, kingler g max uh, doing a lot of work that's what what i see at the moment because i cannot see more than that and of course you have the threat that of gengar by like, just imprisoning it so yeah that's that's tough that's uh that's a tough match. But yeah the, I think this is gonna be also a close match. This is like uh, one of those matches where you you know it really depends on how some turns goes and also acts. So i for me they are favorite like the the South Cryon Towers because they have a they are first of all reliable ways of still trick room and they have speed control and they have heavy eaters. And so it really depends on the like defensive strategy. So for me, if they won, they won again by a really close two one the Sours. Hmm. Yeah, it's 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 difficult to say. I mean the South Cryon Swords are definitely going to be the ones who dictate the speed at which the game plays like they've got the clear advantage on that side of things yeah and i think yeah because you know you see targeting targeting is is weak to gengar i mean you can just go for a sludge wave or a sludge bomb or whatever it is and yeah then it gets really messy and musharna i don't think can uh, can take uh, i mean you have to decide what you spread your musharna for right and you know they can just use NDD and stop your whimsy foot. So I think it's going to be really about Kingler. So if Kingler comes in and is able to take the important KOs with uh, maybe or Rotom Wash as well, but I see a bit more Kingler. We yeah. can see. And especially like if you find a way, like the only thing really that overly threatens maybe like Kingler Crocodile, the is the Sceptile like. <laughs> And Sceptile, it needs boosts to be able to do damage. Um, so I think if you've exactly. got... I think if Oshawott's uh, play to their strengths and make sure they, they, they identify this weakness, not this weakness, but what threatens them per se, or what they want to run is like, say, Sceptile, and they cover for it, uh, I feel like they've got... They might be able to swing the disadvantage in their favour and overcome the opponents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah, it's I mean, they have, they have Arcanine, so that's, you know, I mean, the, it's going to be about, again, it's not, this is not kind of the match that is uh, decided on the matchup itself. I think it's it's decided on the skill of the player. I mean, of course, sometimes you say, oh, yeah, I mean, this is how all the matches should be, right? So they decide on the skill of the player, but there are just some matchups that are really hard. So yeah, I think the Sours can will probably take it 
if they deny the trick room from from their side, from the opponent side. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, I think this is probably going to be the most competitive match of this week. Uh, so, and I think South Korean saw his record, so it'll be really interesting to watch that back. Yeah. But I, I think I've got to say, like, not who I want to win, not who I think should win, but who I expect could win. And I think the one that has, if you played this match 10 times, I think six times it goes to South Korean Saws and four times to the Oshawa's. So, I think I've got to back, uh, and, not back, but I think the South Korean Saws uh, might take this. I'd, I'd like to just comment a little bit. Like, our what we do on our teams is quite similar, but his is faster. And I think that um, it really is going to be a game that is based around control of the game, not necessarily something as simple as control of speed. Uh, and I think that that's something that's difficult in my, like against, like in the Corridon Sora's favor, you know, um, and it is, a, and I will be the first to admit that it is a very challenging matchup. Like it on the surface level, like sure, okay, you've got a, uh, You've got trick room options and stuff, but like, I'm kind of concerned about that Gengar if I do that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, that's that's what I was saying. It's like Musharna does not take the hit. Togetic mm -hmm. is going to be struggling to take the hit as well. And, you know, I mean, okay, Crook does does really well, but then you have the, those Sceptile. Yeah. yeah. Like, Life Orb Sceptiles, it's, mm -hmm. it's a problem. And, well, you know, and not then, even Life Orb. Like, you can, you can yeah. run something like psychic seed with an yeah, ed or exactly. weakness, weakness policy, policy with sneasels with like there are just so many options yeah. um that i have to account for while yeah. also trying to regain control of the game without exactly. speed yeah I, because if you show up with arcanine or with uh crook then it's gonna be a problem right so right yeah i do think that you can learn a lot from the match that Nisenko played with a south Korean souls here and that mm -hmm. you it doesn't need to be afraid of being slower. Though you have yeah. modes to be able to right. change the time. And, and that's also partially where that trick room comes in. Because I think so long as I can take care of Gengar, that yeah. trick room mode will be very powerful yeah. um, in my favor. Because his team yeah. is very fast. Like, I don't think there's a single... Yeah, no, his slowest one is 45, and I have, what, three that are below that already? Yeah, and other than the 40, 245s and the 60 in Waylord, every other mon of his is 95 and above. Yeah. Right, yeah. We're not here to talk about strategies. Uh, talk about, like, a bit of predictions. And, yeah, unfortunately, I see that the Sours can uh, can take this. But, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the, to the match. Okay, so... Do we will move on to the Charlotte B drills versus the Crummer Colossals? Mm -hmm. So, um, initial thoughts on this matchup. Uh, I think I can start and say that yes, there's the Colossal G Max for the Colossals, and that's a st strong mom. But in the face of what the Charlotte B drills have, which is this strong sand mode. It, with the physical ground type of Excadrill, the um, I just for some reason for me, I just look at the matchup and go, it's a game for Mudsdale. And yeah. I think that's the key mon from the Criminal Colossal side. And, and that's the one I'm concerned about at the moment is that Mudsdale. I'm the not going to go well into with it. The Didi and the Weavile. Yeah, I'm not going to go spend ages talking about this matchup. Um, but I personally think that with the right prep, the Charlotte B drills will win this one. And I know I was in favor of the Oshawats last week um, and uh, against the B drills, but I think uh, Brian could win this one. Um, yeah. Carmen? I, unfortunately, I am on the colossal sides of this. Uh, I think there is too much variability on their side to cover all the ground and you know i mean this poor gonzad i mean we if you prepare for something like mastail or colossal and then they they pull out like a taurus frostless 
or polygons at and shallows or model that spores you under trichrome. That's uh, that's a problem. So I mean, for me, that's going to be colossal. So I'm tending more towards colossal, but this not does not mean that I'm I'm going to root for you, Brian, and we're going to see what we can do about this. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's fair. Honestly, I think that even though the Oregon Z and the Frostass Tauros are powerful, I think it's also important to note that some of the very mons that are helping with that Colossal also resist some of those options. And it's really going to be a game about not only prep, but what do you bring in the actual game yeah. after you after you like make your teams and stuff because exactly. it's it's not so simple as to okay here this team can cover literally everything you know it's yeah. going to be a game that you have to play and adapt in. and I, I i think it's going to be a really fun match to look forward to though i do think that the charlotte Bree drills will take the take it maybe like 2-1 okay yeah. okay so who have we got next Can you refresh, please? Uh, we've got the... Yeah, sure. Uh, so we've got the Aggie Slash Blades versus the Dark Lords Greninjas, I believe. Yeah. Oof. Cool. So. Rain versus Rain. No, yeah. Rain versus Cartana, which is <laughs> scary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is true. So, yeah. to me, it's going to be just a straight 2 0 from the Greninjas. No, I... not not thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've seen uh, Palace Wine is actually a decent check to Reggie Lecky as well. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, so, like, even that Reggie Lecky is going to struggle against this team. Um, Electa Bayer, I still don't like it that much, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> the. I like Electa Bayer as a mon design. Yeah. Don't like it competitively. Yeah. Uh, when I was looking at the edges of blades, and sorry if I cut out, cut you off, nah, is that it. there is a lack of a strong fire type, and yeah. mm -hmm. this is for him it's a huge problem when they are facing a Cartana. So you know, they have Cartana. Of course, they don't have Intimidate except for Litten, and Litten just dies. <laughs> uh, you have Cartana, which is fast and strong, and the only one that can resist actually it's Edge Slash that can do something against it. Maybe a PP Edge Slash, but still, uh, I mean, Cartana, uh, AV, if probably spread, and maybe with some Tailwind support, can do mad damage to this uh, to this team. So, does Cartana yeah. get access to knock off this gen? No, no I think it's. It yeah, night slash okay, is the so dark fire. Something. Um, yeah. I can see it, an overheat litten coming for it. I know it's strange, but he has brought overheat litten before. But it's also interesting to note that even though you do have said to Scorch and Litten, not only are those two mons not particularly powerful, but they're also especially not so powerful whenever you're facing a team with three water types. Yeah. Um, so. I mean, and uh, one of those is Polyvrat. I mean, Polyvrat yeah. is fast and like hits like a truck. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I agree, to be honest. I, I've got a, I know they've got the Incineroar on the, uh, yeah, the Incineroar with the Greninjas as well. It's, I just, I see the Greninjas winning this one. It yeah. really yeah. feels like a dominant matchup, really. It's, yeah. In, in the Agus Slash Blades least. have to play in a mode that they usually want to be in, and they have to try and find a way to play outside of that mode. They've got this rain mode that they've they've got to protect the Aggie Slash, yeah. but in this situation, they don't want to be playing in rain in order to take out mm -hmm. the threats of the opponent. I, I think the they're going to struggle to do that. Dual rain matchup, and then it just looks like the Dark Lords of Greninjas has the better rain mode than the um, Aegis Slash Blades in general. Well, not even specifically rain mode, but just in this matchup, they can take advantage of the rain more That's effectively it. than just having a yeah. fast mon in rain, you know? Yeah, right. I agree. That's about all the um, Age Slash have is the Kingdra and rain, and even 
that's not as fast as it could be. Right. They're actually mm-hmm. pretty similar teams when looking at them. Like they've got mm-hmm. a, a bug type uh, G Max. They've got two physical, uh, strong physical uh, steel types. I know Agus Lash can be special. Uh, they've got a rain mode. They've got the electric Montego alongside it. They've got Incineroar and Litten as an Intimidator. They're, they're, they're pretty close as you can get in the same draft. Yeah, yeah but they, I mean, the thing is that the Greninjas, they have Grimmsnarl and Incineroar and yeah. Placephala. Yeah. It's, I, I seriously, I, I think no more really needs to be said. I think the Greninjas yeah. will win this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, next team is Merseyside well, Marowaks. I don't know. Can versus... refresh it as well? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, the Merseyside Marowaks versus the Southeast Lux Rays. You can okay. see? It? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So. Initial thoughts? <laughs> Initial thoughts? Trick Room on Merseyside Marowax is still very powerful. Um, and But other than the last year, Southeast Lux Rays seem to have something that can help with quite a bit of that. Yeah. Uh, and we've seen that uh, the Southeast Lux Rays know how to um, cancel a Trick Room. They've done it before mm-hmm. in this. Um, they've already they did it in week one, so they know how to do it. They have the imprison uh, Trick Room on the Meowstic. Though it is important to note that you also have the option for Speed Swap on the Merge Side Marowak side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an, it's interesting because you have like one or two clear threats on the side of Mersey side of Marowak. Like you've got last year and you've got the threat of Trick Room. Yeah. Um, and although Southeast Lux Rays can handle almost everything else, like it, it hits Copper Raja for super effective, it hits Barrascuta for super effective, it hits Neuburn for super effective and all, going all the way down the list. Um, but not being able to handle something as big as last year on surface level is kind of a threat. And unless they can really kind of find a way to build around it and try to uh, sort of like fight back for that dominant position yeah. whenever Glastry is on the field. Um, yeah. I, I think that's just something that they have to do if they want to win. If, of course, the Merseyside Marowak spring last year this week. Definitely. I mean, yeah. from, I mean, there is something. So the you said the Merseyside Marowak are really strong in their aviators, but if by optic he's able to put himself in what we call, I mean, me and now Matrix call it the wall or like mm-hmm. build something like behind screens and start uh, like slowly reducing the damage. That uh, the Marowak, the Merseyside Marowaks are like spreading out. Like, mm-hmm. so, you know, for instance, Myostic, Myostic sets up a, a reflect, and then you have a Tapufini setting up another defense. So, even Dynamax, in being an offensive Tapufini, he's going to do mad damage. Mm-hmm. And same thing is, um, I don't know, doing a, a Rilaboom to, to Blastoise. And so, you know, it's going to be really about. Putting myself as this veil, having really bulky mods that then can take the hit and then fighting back. And I think this is how Bioptic can uh, win this one. But I think it's going to be very really hard. I also think that that was sort of an evident play style, yeah. like week two as well. Like you saw, he brought Meowstic, he set up those screens, and he did tank a lot of hits from like a Dynamax Pokemon. Yeah. Albeit it might not be as strong as last year, but. Like, it's still kind of impressive nonetheless. And if he's able to really take what he's learned last week and implement it into a sort of bulkier thing where he can stall out the opponent's Dynamax or deal enough damage, like, sort of from the get-go to handle that, I yeah. think he yeah. might be yeah. in a good position this week as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, the I kind of like my chair did a, a small noise, but yeah, I I agree with you. It's uh, it's something. I mean, 
I I am rooting in this in this situation for Bioptic, and I really hope uh, he can just he can finally get the W. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I I'm really afraid that he's gonna lose his mind in case uh, the opponent brings a uh, Alice switch and start doing Alice switch stuff. I I think that like three matches in a row that we've covered here, but I or three predictions that we've covered here, but I I also think that this one could be close. Mm. I'm looking at it and I think Bioptic's got tools to be able to deal with Mercedes and Marowax and yes he can create this defensive wall but I think a lot of what Bioptic has to do is a lot of groundwork to be able to get the advantage in this match and it's mm -hmm. a case of whether he can execute that without being absolutely steamrolled by a Glastria yeah mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. Even once he gets screens up, if that Glastria is running Lumberry for the Will O Wisp, it's it's going to be hard to stop, even with screens. Yeah. Once it gets rolling, yeah. so I want to support uh, Southeast Luxrays, but I do think the Mercedes and Myrax will get the win. Yeah, I also I also have the feeling the same feeling. Yeah, even yeah. though it, I think it could be close, I would give the advantage to the Merseyside Myrax as well. Like last year, it just works too well in the trick room, and then it can even with the um, speed swap just outspeed his entire team in wreck house. So uh, um, I, 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 I'd agree with that assessment. And Center Scorch does provide a resistance to Glastria in a way because of what Glastria gets fighting, steel, ice, and ground. It does not get yeah. rockfall. It doesn't get rock. Exactly. Fall. So ground is its only move that hits neutral to Center Scorch. So Center Scorch mm -hmm. is quite a good matchup to this egg last year and um, i know you could bring a special one is a special you could bring a special sense of scorch yeah uh, i know like last I... year's the physical defense is super high so maybe he goes I... into the special one this one it's not Even... an oko but it'll do more damage i think i don't think it would do more damage no, over time, no. though, especially considering no. you're using max quake to yeah or like exactly yeah. I was power to say. hit the yeah like yeah it... no it's it's better to be running, I would say, a physical sense of scorch in this situation mm -hmm. because of this. You know it's going to be hitting you with a max quake. Yeah. Uh, plus, the, the difference in defense and special defense isn't as prominent for like sense of scorch as difference in special attack and especially attack. If he, especially if he chose to run something like Assault Vest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's very likely given their, their special uh, capabilities or like Tapu Fini uh, right. and stuff like that, which hit neutrally to Glastria. The Correct issue that I've got with the Center Scorch play is that the Mercedes and Marowak still have like Blastoise, Barascuda. And yes, Center mm -hmm. Scorch gets like max overgrowth. But it doesn't really want to be taking a max geyser from Blastoise, you know? Right. Yeah. So um, it's also interesting to point out like you have Rillaboom. Yeah. I mean, what stops uh, Biopti from bringing like Rillaboom, Tabufini, Meostic, yeah. Center yeah. Scorch, and two fillers? And I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, like Drift Blim, I think Drift Bloom's a good one here. Drift Bloom is, is good. I mean, to oh. also even, you know, if you want to be like uh, exotic, you can uh, just uh, app, like. You go can for also uh, um, run Will O Wisp on yeah. Drift Bloom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite common. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I love my Rillaboom Drift Bloom combo. He's actually got, I think yeah. he's got three mons that I used last season Rillaboom, yeah. Drift Bloom, and Chloritzer. Chloritzer. Yeah. Oh. So he went the terrain route, similar to what I did with three of my mods last season. They, they, yeah, they went actually, really well. But that is actually kind of what I had uh, originally planned on doing at the very start of this. Like all of this, I had my eyes on Driftlin. Okay. So, so I was looking at like Swacky, not Rillaboom. So we now move on to my match, which mm -hmm. I'm not going to say mm -hmm. too much because of honestly, at this point, I know it's quite midweek. I've barely looked at the matchup, so. Where is it? Drazi, oh, you've already done it. Drazi Dracozolts. Yeah. So I'll let you guys uh, talk about it a bit. Oof. Um, I think it's uh, one sided from your side. I mean, the, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, Metacross uh, with uh, like Rock Move is. He's doing a lot of damage to all his Pokemon. You, ju you just need to be careful with with Intalion, but once you, you have your Eurorobel set up, then you're good to go. I mean, 
the you just need to be careful with this tricky check button imp team but i mean i don't think he has the tools to to get past your aurora veil if you set it up of course and uh your other track like i mean you also have uh a moltres even though he has a venus or ninthus does not get any rock moves so mm. you know and you have a, like a lightning rock with zapto so that's that's kind of rough for for Masenko. Isn't Zapdos static? No, no, yeah, Lightning I mean, Rod for Pikachu. Yeah, oh, Pikachu. Right. Zapdos. Okay. Um, I don't think uh, I really want to spend too much time going on my matchup. Yeah. So, uh, okay. I'm going to back myself because of, I have to. Um, <laughs> I've played uh, Masenko before. Um, his sets can be quite uh, unique. Um, and It'll be. I'm. I'm interested to see what he actually brings. Like, whatever I expect him to bring, never usually is what is brought. So, um, yeah. we won't spend too much time on my mind. Uh, so we've got the Lily Cove Lichen Rocks versus the Amateur Alchemies. Now, just based on record alone, I'm going to back the Amateur Alchemies here. I think they'll win. Yeah. Can you please refresh? Sorry about that. No problem. I don't have uh, Nitro, so it's a bit of thingy. Um, so I, I'm going to back the Alchemies. I think the Alchemies will win. Same. At least 2-1. I, I think that, yeah. Like, there's really not too much from the other team that I can I see that handles Lapras. And... Yeah. Lapras going burr. Yeah, and exactly. And Salamence, yeah. uh, poor... Poor Salamence cannot do much, and of course, the Umbro... the Lapras is the Magnuson. It's really it. And then you've got Raichu on uh, the Alchemy side, which helps or redirect even, the electric. Or yeah. even Chandelure, which also hits Corviknight ostensibly. And yeah. I mean, and the Magnuson as well, there. Eh? And you can yeah. actually uh, run Lapras mixed with like mainly special attack, weakness policy, boosted with drill run as Max Quake into Magnuson. It's also yeah. important to note that. I don't see a whole lot of damage, and if you can get Parish Song up, as much as I don't like that move, yeah, um, like that is an option, and it's yeah. a pretty threatening option considering most of the Lily Cove Lycan Rocks team is bulkier rather than yeah, it's quite offensive. passive. Yeah, um, even though he's got mons like Tapabulu, Landorus, Crawlons, yeah. and Magnazone. they're all weak to. They just. Twice. Yeah, there's like four times weaknesses yeah. stacked upon stack upon stack. And it's just a bit... You can take advantage of that in this situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think Alchemies will win this. I don't. I think it'll be a... Personally, I reckon it'll be a 2-0 win, but... I agree. Who knows? Yeah. Though, so, who knows? He could surprise us again. Uh, did take a game off of Primic Colossals. Yeah, we were correct. Yeah. So Somerville Scraggies versus uh, the Bavarian Landorus. Mm -hmm. hmm. We got the Intellion uh, G Max versus the Charizard. Actually, I, I have an odd take here as well. I mean, let let me, let me hear what uh, our uh, Oshawa friends can tell us about it. But I have an odd take on this. Yeah, I. I think the Somerville Scraggies are good. I agree. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I mean, really good, actually. You but know, just in the uh, specific matchup, I mean, you've got exactly you've this got is the so Intellion, specific. You've got the Togekiss. You've got yeah. Serena to help with Gastrodon. Like yeah. any other water types that don't outspeed Charizard, maybe I wouldn't vote for them. Any other like fairy types that maybe couldn't easily tank everything that Urshifu throws, maybe it would be different. But, mm -hmm. like, everything just stacks up here in and the Scraggy's favor. Even Comfe, yeah. with that priority yeah. draining kiss, you can still do no. a lot of damage to... You can, you can do you can, uh, priority, priority Giga, Drain. Giga Drain into yeah. GMAC. Exactly. Yeah. Like you can run it with decent special attack and boost your Gudra, because Gudra's got such a high special defense anyway, you can still run Comfy with a decent special attack enough to be able to do mad damage to Sableye, to uh, uh, 
uh, Urshifu to the uh, Gastrodon. Mm-hmm. It's it's yeah. it's very favorable in my opinion. I to am, the single spell. I'm really looking forward to uh, Tyler showing us how to play this team because he has mm-hmm. so many options. He has like this Intellion that I mean the G Max uh, special move that he doesn't care about Gastrodon. A yeah. Togi kiss for Urshifu. Gudra is just Walt's Charizard. Charizard can do anything about it, like to Gudra, especially maybe if I AV Gudra, no damage. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And right. uh, yeah, Manekto can just try to like nuzzle stuff, but still. Like, and Tarina yeah, and for Gastrodon. Yeah, and that's another important thing. You've got Flacky and Manectric there to counter Inteleon, where guess what? You've got like Togekiss and you've got. Well, I don't know what quite hits Manectric, yeah, but I'm on. sure that there's something on there, and it's not as big of a threat as, say, like Inteleon in the face of a Charizard, you know? Hmm. And even Sizzle, which I know some of Ill Scraggy doesn't have a lot of a. Has a real fire type, but I mean, in not being funny, Gudra can carry enough fire coverage for a sizzle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So can run heat wave or flamethrower. Exactly. For sure. So I think it's a clear matchup advantage for the Somerville Scraggies, and I do expect mm-hmm. them to w- win. Uh, whether it be 2 1 or 2 0 depends on the tech that ba- uh, the Bavarian yeah. Landorus brings. Like, they could be creative and mm-hmm. take it by surprise. And I think that's kind of where, if he is going to be creative with his sets, like uh, you said, he comes from that uh, German background uh, community with these creative sets, yeah. I think this is the time he needs to show it. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I do think that there are ways that he can handle it, simply because Inteleon can no longer set the rain. Yes. So if you if you do something like Charizard, Sableye, Sunny Day, Protector, Max Guard, the Charizard. Yeah. Like, it might feel like a wasted turn, but you set up Sunny Day that can't really be easily taken down. Yeah, but that's also the thing with, uh, like, G-Max Wildfire uh, to KO just Togekiss, right? Mm-hmm. So you can just G-Max Wildfire the Togekiss and setting up Sunny Day, and uh, this, like, Hydro Snipe is not going to kill you. Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know the counts on that. Yeah, but, but that's you know, that's you, also, can, you can make yeah. it to live, right? You can you can have a Pasha Berry, you can go for AV Charizard. So there are ways to yeah. work on Charizard. Because then you, you also have, um, like, if Sableye lives that turn, you have something like Quash next turn. Yeah, and you can exactly. maybe the, max Overgrowth into the Inteleon or Latias, you get Tailwind. Yeah. Which... Actually, that wouldn't really work because you already max guarded turn one. I don't yeah, know. Of course, there, but... there are options and ways to yeah. work around it. And I think yeah, but also implementing... Sableye Sesh, for instance, right? Sableye oh, Sesh. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't die from uh, uh, from the either snipe uh, if in case, right? So he can right. quash if you KO the Tokis next time. So you have a lot of stuff that you can do for for this. Or you can just taunt, right? So he taunt the Tokis mm-hmm. so he cannot redirect anymore. And then Charizard is going to shoot that uh like overgrow into Inteleon that's gonna KO. Mm-hmm. So there are ways, right? Or you know the the Max A stream if you predict a protect. So as we said, there are ways to deal, but it's gonna be rough. So you it's, know it's it's really just trying to fight the stream, I think here. Yes. Like fight fight the river or whatever. Yeah, and that's uh, whatever it's there's says, yeah. yeah. But there's like a there's just so much on by uh, the Scraggy side here, and yeah. really trying to counter it all yeah. is going to be difficult. And I think it's more of a who can last longer, or like how long can he last to the torrential downpour of absolute yeah. destruction that maybe Inteleon or Gudra or Togekiss yeah. can bring to like all of his moms. Yeah, I mean, looking at this, I have an idea. Uh, but of course, I'm not gonna say it loud, loud because maybe that's the strategy from mm-hmm. uh, our our friend. But yeah, right. Yeah, I think it's an interesting match. Yeah, mm-hmm. me too. I mean, it's interesting, but I think it's gonna be one sided if yeah. things go wrong. You you have to play perfectly for it to be. Yeah. You have to not only play perfectly, but also prep perfectly as well. Yeah, prep prep um, well, not perfectly. Yeah, prep well. And oh. have a decent game plan, and and hope for things go in your way. Maybe yeah. you like uh, 
get also creaked in a crucial moment, and that's mm -hmm. going to be how yeah. the Bavarian Landers can get it. And and that's sort of the the game we play too, because yeah. like there there is a little bit of hey, a little bit of luck could push me to a win here, you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, like a low so roll. I, it'll be interesting. <laughs> low rolling a Reggie Gigas hit. Roll, yeah. roll, low rolling against a Reggie Gigas. Yeah, that. We 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 yeah. The game we play, we love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think that uh, concludes the uh, predictions anyway. So yeah, for this week. So, um, can you guys see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, um, we got the teams here for the next week. I think that's basically anything. Any, uh, any last thoughts or any closing remarks from you guys? I, yeah, good I luck at fun games. Week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Carmen. Yeah, yeah, so thanks, Carmen, for joining us today. Uh, Miss Enko yeah, no couldn't be here because of uh, uh, Bill and Well, and uh, it was great to have you um, on board. Yeah, my pleasure. Fantastic. My pleasure. It was fun. You're a fast, you were a fantastic addition to the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks absolutely. a lot. And as always, thanks to both Brian and Oddball for joining me as well. Hey, no problem. So glad to be here. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back here again next week sometime with the rankings for week three. So mm -hmm. we'll yes, see sir. you all then. Also, all the right. results this guys. week. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks, Take guys. Care. Bye. Bye bye.